Good morning, good morning, good morning. What up, chat? What's up? You ever already have a good day? It's gonna be a good day. Yo chat, how come it's always, what's the bias and never good morning? <laughs> how come it's always like that? Correct. That's how you do it. That's how you do it devious way. Everything starts with a W first. What's the wise way? You know. <laughs> What's going on, chat? Good morning, Miss Jazz. What, what, what? Yeah, gold. Bottom wick, though. You need a bottom wick, though. All right, so be patient. Be patient. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be an interesting day. I think today has like more structure overall than yesterday. Yesterday, like it had structure, but it wasn't like the ranges weren't as strong as they are today, you know. And with today's ranges, and us breaking out the ranges today, or if we do break the ranges today, it's gonna be a lot more interesting. I say today, right? We have more of a structure today. We have more of a sense of a direction today, but let's see, guys. Let's see. This daily wasn't a nice closure. <laughs> no bomb. I ain't going to click. I feel that. Okay, once you get to 200, I'll start, I'll start the analysis off. So a lot of people don't miss out. No picture, share your screen. It's coming. It's coming, GP. It's coming. Come on. First day in the stream or what? Do you guys know like the intro is usually 20 minutes long, right? Minimum. I'm playing. I think there's no monitor. Yo, can I get a mod check? Mod check in the chat. get a mod check yeah you will see my screen don't worry don't worry brother damn this circle of x today sheesh all right we got 200 now we can start off oh shoot, wrong screen Going on, guys. Now my hair today is um. Sorry. All right. 
going on? Good morning. What's up, chat? Today, today you have, let's see. Today you have, you have news today. You have news at 8.30. They, they got unemployment claims at 8.30 for the US dollar. And they're expecting numbers to come out pretty good. So that should be interesting for a uh, goal today. And then you also have news at 10 a.m. as well. You have Fed Chair Powell testifies, a little speech going on. And then you have ISM Services PMI, which they are expecting good numbers again for the dollar. So let's see. They're expecting good numbers, but who knows? Price may do whatever it wants, right? But let's get started here. So starting off with gold. Gold for the week looks like my bias remains the same. You know, same bias since Sunday. We're still, I'm still bearish here for the week. Expecting price to come down to fill these ranges here. Um, thing is, like, we're obviously bearish for the week, but there's no confirmation of us going down just yet, especially for our day time frame. Day time frame is heavily bullish today. There's, there's no confirmation at all. But you know, if price ends up flipping. Right, I'm just drawing ideas there. If price ends up flipping, then we're gonna drive down. But until price actually flips, this can stay bullish and close bullish for the week, uh, which should be interesting because now if you look left there, this is a resistance you had, and this will be the first time price is actually closing above the range. If we do close tomorrow above this resistance, then you can probably expect a lot of volume next week to drive price up towards the next resistance levels. But yeah, biases remains the same there. Um, Mike sounds shocked. There you go. Sorry. Y'all don't know why like, every stream. I don't, I'm not sure why every stream it does that. Um, but yeah, so bias remains the same until we actually break the highs. But uh, with the day count closing today, bullish or closing bearish. Sorry, closing bearish right at resistance here. You would expect price to. I mean, here's the thing. We create a resistance right around here on gold. Let me just mark it out for you guys. I gotta sneeze. Yeah, I can't sneeze. Um, we had a resistance right around here being created right for us. So if this is your resistance and price created a, this is a previous resistance, this is a previous support. This is a range that we were previously in. This is now the new range we're in right now, right? Price yesterday didn't close bullish above the range. It didn't close bullish at all. It didn't break the highs, but what it did was it closed bearish of resistance, right? So today's candle, I would expect it to drive down as long as it respects the previous candle high, as long as it respects this high, pressure drive down to fill this wick and fill the range is coming down towards like 1910 ish um, for sales, right? So I w I'm still gonna be open to buy since the weekly is still, you know, bull right now, but um, I'm gonna need a range to break up for buys. That's what, you, that's what you want for buys. But today, overall, I'm bearish for a day. So um, I think if I'm looking for sales today on gold, I would probably wanna see. I want to see this resistance uh, break here, or I want to see this close back into the range here. If we close back into the range, we can probably continue down because what's happening right now is, yeah, the day candle is, is still open. And right now, it's just being created on top wick here, right? So the moment you can start to reject on a small time frame, you start to break below ranges, that could lead you to this day candle flipping bearish. And then the day candle will end up coming down to fill a range like this after creating on top wick, right? Coming down to fill those levels there. So. Um, we're just going to be anticipating that to happen if we do break below these ranges. But for now, I think uh, sales for me would, would be below 1934. And then buys for me would be. Or I'm trying to see to resistance. If you break above, yeah, I think bias for me would be above here, guys. Above 1939. Bias above 1939 would push you up towards the next. Uh, the next resistance which is up here at like 1945 okay so it's not bad going up the range going up is a solid 60 pit range going up you're gonna really need to break out this range though because this is a pretty chopped range though we also have no bottom wick on this hourly candle so i'm expecting this discount to create a bottom wick on the hourly before we decide to push up further or if not then we wait for a worst case the adm candle will close and then take positions at adm after we have the next hour can opens up because there's no no bottom wick here all right the range we're in right now is like a solid 45 pit range going up. If you break above, it's another solid 
six per match going up, right? 65 pips. So it's not bad at all. Just be patient today, though. Um, buzz above here, closure, range to breakouts, and cells will be below here for fake outs. Cells below here, closure, fake out. Range one, fake out. All right. Pretty simple there, guys, for the most part. And then cells would be below 1934. You can probably take them down towards like, I want to say 1929. It's like a 50 foot range going down, coming down to fill these ranges down here. All right. These ranges over here. So if you do reject and you do come back into the range, something like this, you would probably expect the next candle to drive down and come down towards 1928. But you need this kind of close back into the range. If we close whatever, like this, this, this is a range that, like, this is similar to yesterday. This is a range that we're gonna spend majority of today's NY session in. If price breaks out, then you're gonna you see a lot of movement. But if price stays within this range today, we're gonna be chalked, and it's gonna be within that range. So it's a new range we're breaking into, but it's the current ranges that we may range to the rest of, for the rest of the session. Who knows, right? But moving on to GJ here, I think GJ looks a lot cleaner today, if I'm not wrong. I think the weekly has finally came up. It has created a top wick here and now it's starting to reject again, right? So earlier this week, you guys may have noticed that we had no top wick on this weekly candle. Price came up, came up yesterday, gave that top wick. So I wouldn't be surprised if you start to continue down again because price, the first thing I did this week was come down, tap the support, rejected, created a top wick. So I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to head back down slowly again. But I think the daily is bullish today, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, daily is bullish on GJ. So GJ thing is like, Yesterday we closed below this support, but now you can say that, you know what? Price is creating a new support right around here. So for, for more sales today, you're gonna need a closure below here on a daily time frame, right? Overall, because then you could you could expect price to drop down towards next support level at 1.5, Um, And then you can also say that this is a resistance as well. So this is just a range that we're currently be, uh, currently creating here on gold here. And if you break below like 1.53 here, you can probably look to continue down towards like 1.5, 1.500. Um, but that's the daily. I mean, off of the daily alone, it shows that you are a resistance. And yes, this daily candle, although it closed bullish, it closed rejecting this resistance or closed below that resistance, right? With barely a topic as well. So 50 50 of this candle going up today with the, with the price being at resistance and two prices not having a top wick. So I wouldn't be surprised if you start, start rejecting today and then start to come down towards the, the support at 153, uh, 500 ish levels, right? Um, but I think for sales for me today, I'm gonna need to, let's see, four hour shows that you're bearish here. We're breaking that far low. So you should come down towards the 154419 level. Yeah, I think sales for me today would be if we were to break below. So this is a resistance here, right? So if you want buys, that's your newest resistance. You probably want buys above there. Above here, you can drive up towards 1558. What is this? 825-ish. Those are the buys you want going with the bias. But if you're going against the bias, you need a range to break out. And for me, that's going to be resistance up here, support, range one. I guess range two would be below here. Yeah, so below here probably will be my cells. I'm going to avoid this range. Below here, you have clean cells until I want to say coming down towards these ranges down here. All right. Not bad. Pretty solid. A tire below there, or we go down from maybe below here. But the thing about below here is that if you're looking for solids here, you have this right here that's kind of bothering me. You have a minor support here. So why don't I just move your support down to here and look for cells below there because then you have clean traffic. Because that's that's your plan, right? You're trying to find the levels, like the cleanest levels to trade. The cleanest ranges and that's going to be below here driving price down towards here all right not bad um yeah so i'm going to move it down towards this port and then i guess we can see cells below there hopefully it's not a chalk that yesterday yesterday was for the most part pretty rangy i think we got some late ny moves but very late. We're still in that range the whole session, I think. Yeah, you had the cells, but I mean, 
I guess we can't. We broke down the cells, but it's just kind of. It was still in the range overall yesterday. So. Yeah, it came down yesterday at like 11, 12 ish. Came down towards that uh, 1915 level, tapped that support, and it just rejected from there. And then it ranged with the whole entire Asian, London, or the rest of New York, Asia, and London. And now we're uh, New York, we're still within the range, but we might get a break over here. Yeah, this is cool. The four count, four count is counts breaking the highs here. So with the four count of breaking the highs, you would kind of expect price to drop up here towards the resistance. The issue with this right now is we're in some trouble because I want to say trouble, but this four hour candle low has no bottom wick. So this four hour candle low could uh, be creating a bottom wick at any given point. And with the bias being bullish, but the daily respecting that resistance, or sorry, with the bias being bearish today, um, if we close below 1834, we're probably going to go back into the range and then come down and create the bottom wick, right? So that breakout on a small time frame can lead to the higher time frame coming down towards that bottom wick level. Because look, this is the bottom wick on, on the four hour candle. It's at, 1928 right so if you drive down think of this as a range if you break below back below the support look left you have clean traffic to where 1928 right this is my support here so if you drive down towards 1928 what's going to happen on the four hour time frame four count would, be, would then be reflipping bearish and a four count would probably come down to give that four hour bottom wick right and if the four count reject uh, flips bearish respecting that resistance though because this four count never closes out of resistance and it has two two hours left in this candle it's still within this range here we can expect this four candle to drive uh, this daily candle or four candle to drive down now and this could just be a top wick being created if we do end up flipping so you see how one thing one thing just leads to another thing um but yeah let's see let's see what happens here should be interesting should be interesting Daily is, yeah, daily is going to be that, and then daily here is going to be perfect. Hmm. Yeah, it's a solid four-pit range going down. This, this one account should flip here. It has no bottom wick, right? And you didn't close above. You have eight minutes left. I wouldn't be surprised if you end up closing bearish or we end up closing doji right, right below this resistance. But wait for that closure. But it's also another reason why I'm avoiding this range too. Like, even if we do work close bullish above the range, I'm not looking for bias here. I'm looking for bias above the range above, above 1839 instead. It's like a 50-pit range going up above that area. Our range has a lot of rejections. Oh shit, that's sick, Marcos. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, like, you even got your PC today, so. You know what it is? Cause, um, you might gotta get like a, I don't know, like the blue, like, I'm not sure if your PC has good Bluetooth. I don't know, I think there's like a, a little like Bluetooth thing you can buy. Where the boys at? They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Wixan, Marcos, they're all coming. Don't worry, chat. It's full house today, right? They're all coming. Yeah, they have a microphone built in. It's not the cleanest microphone, though. I think, uh, I think AirPod microphone is a little, a little, a bit better, but yeah, those microphones aren't bad. It's, it's definitely better than your, your laptop one of those for sure. And also you have like, I'm not sure if, if you can control that stuff on like the windows, but if you have like that, um, like the mic mode where you can have, uh, what's it called again? Yes. Standard mic or you have, um, um, I forgot what it's called. Standard mic or, um, what's the other one called? Isolation or something. So it compresses your background for you. Mm -hmm. Why not this range? 
because this range has the, the one I can have no bottom wick right so I'm, I'm worried about this range I'm worried about this count this next count coming down at any given point um to fake up back into the range like this I know the day is like over uh bearish too so we need a range to break out I think this I think we have a range two by now though for buys if I'm not wrong but I'm more comfortable with buys above 1939 um this count here I'm expecting to just close bear I mean, well, when did the day start? They started around here, right? So I guess you have range two. Yeah, you have range one and then range two buys be above here, but the one hour has no bottom wick. I'll be very careful here. And also the four candles, it has no bottom wick as well. So back to back, no bottom wicks is interesting. Yeah. I mean, the one hour can still close above and the next one hour account could come down, break the lows and still close both. That's 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 another that's something you look out for as well. But I'm pretty worried about this one hour resistance, uh, one hour bottom wick here. Right. So if you guys jumped the gun earlier, earlier, then congrats, you would have stayed out. <laughs> we hope you stay out. Um, so if there's no wick in the candle. No, there's different uh, there's different types. There's uh, no top wicks for a bullish channel closure. There's no bottom wicks on a uh, bullish channel opening like right now. So there's different types and they mean different things. They don't all mean the same thing. It just wouldn't make sense to mean the same thing. It's like no top wick on a bullish channel closure in case that there's no range to drive up. Right. But if you have, for instance, like um, obviously or vice versa, you have a bearish candle. I resist uh, coming down with no bottom wick. Same thing. There's no range to go, go up on the bullish candle and there's no range to go down on a bearish candle. But when you have like no bottom wick on a bearish candle like this, um, or you have no top wick in the opening, you would expect the next candle to come up and create that top wick before we drive down. So price ends up creating a top wick, and then once it flips is bearish, what can happen is it can look something like this, right? Because the next candle usually creates a top wick for you. Um, but either or like, it's it's usually just a excuse for me to stay out of the trade. Like I'm not I'm not in I'm not like nowhere near taking a position right whenever uh, we have those uh, type of candles I just stay out I kind of watch them play out all right it doesn't always 100% mean that it will like it will reject or it will do what I'm expecting but it's just a reason for me to stay out because the train the trade of the probably of that trade goes from like an 85% to like a 25 uh, or 50% right so, but that's a great example right now one hour fake out and then you have I'm bottom one to four. Um, do you have MT4 and MT5 on your Mac? Um, MT5, but I turn on my phone anyways. I'm trying. I, mean, I usually enter trades on my phone. I don't really, I don't really have uh, like, I haven't opened the MT5 on my Mac and my my uh, PC in a minute. All right. So if you guys missed the analysis earlier, go back and watch the morning analysis. We discussed the this one hour candle here. We discussed how we could be rejecting here, and then this could lead to the four hour candle creating a bottom wick, and then this will lead to the daily candle flipping bearish at the same given time. It can just lines up together. It's like perfect, and that's how trading should be. You're just adding pieces to the puzzle. Little piece here, little piece there, adds to this huge puzzle that you gotta solve. Right, one huge story. What, what five minute GJ gold? I mean, yeah, it's like, um, I mean, you can say rejection, yeah, you can go off of that. There, there, yeah, yo, I man, we never close above, we know this though, you know what I mean? Like, we, we, we never closed above, and we need to close above for price to drive up, right? And this kind of had no bottom wick as well, so it's probably why it's flipping, but yeah, we, we expected that to happen. Any broker suggestions? Um, speaking about broker, I'm trying out Blueberry Markets today, guys. Spreads are pretty solid too. Like right now, spreads for me on Blueberry Markets are like, um, let's see here. Mm, 1.1 pip on gold, and then like GJ is like 0.6. I'm just trying it out, you know. Like, um, I haven't made the official like transition over, but I'm just testing out the broker at the same time as I'm testing. I'm still on TD. I like TD and all. Like TD is a great broker. It's just that um. I'm uh, Blueberry Markets is, it reminds me of uh, my old broker, Vantage FX. It's regulated. It's uh, um, regulated in Australia. Not that I care for regulation as much, but it's just it's that and the spreads are smaller. TD has the greatest customer service, though. 
that I ever came by in a broker. So, I don't know. Also, another thing about TD is like you have a face behind a broker, right? And whereas like Blueberry Markets, there's no face behind a broker. You, even though it's regulated, you don't know who's behind it. So like even if it's regulated, they can still run off your money. People think that when a broker is regulated, they 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 would usually stay and just um yeah, they usually stay and you know not run away for money, but not always, man. Holy, that's a sixty pit rejection. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, this is clean. Yeah, this is clean, guys. One hour cram bottom wick. Look left. If you close in 24 seconds here, especially below like 1932, which I don't think you will, but oh, maybe. Okay, who knows? Maybe we'll close below. If you close below, you can probably expect the next daily uh, one hour candle to drive all the way down to fill this range here. And as the one hour candle fills that range, the four hour candle will be coming down. To create the bottom wick. I think you need a closure though. I think that this 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 closure of resistance isn't bad. It's not, it's like a it's still a fake out though, because you had a, a false breakout earlier on like the 15 or something. It's a 15 minute fake out, but um it was just a one hour of resistance still, right? But um let's see. I really want I really I really want us to break below 1932 here for sales. Yeah, it closed right at support. So like, since you close now, like right at the support level, this not just becomes a range. It's a range from here to like here. Very minor range. It's a range within a bigger range. Within a bigger range. I see markets. I can't. I'm from Canada. Yeah, no, you can't have like, not, even, not even crypto as a country. Yeah, it sucks, but I'm pretty sure though, like I, I'll be with Blueberry Markets for another like year, but I'm pretty sure at some given point they're gonna not they're not gonna accept the um, Canadian clients anymore because of the regulations. It's the same thing that happened with Vantage FX. Vantage FX did the same thing, and I see markets they kicked out Canadian clients because of regulations. Canada's just too too strict. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll last like maybe another year or so with uh, with uh, Blueberry, and that's it. I'll probably go back to like TD full time again. Do you take trades during pre and Y? Yeah, I do. It's just um, these are trades have been taken. Like this, this for the most part this year, we were taking one trade at uh, one one trade at seven, and then trade at seven, three trades at seven. February we're taking trades, two trades in, at seven or before eight, and then March no trades at. But yeah, this is February, guys. Not bad. Yeah, I appreciate you being here today, guys. 6.20 of you guys already in the chat. 4 7 a.m. That's crazy. Also, thanks for 1.1k 1, 1, 1. 1 yesterday. That's, uh, that's insane. Let's just hope we can get some positions today because, man, the past... Three days have been pretty choppy for gold. Like, like I think we don't don't the only reason we took uh, that one trade on Mar on the uh, March first was because we stayed longer that that day. We stood to like twelve. If we didn't stay till twelve, we, we wouldn't have been uh, taking a trade that day. And I can't stay till twelve every day. You know, like that's not my training hours. I'm pretty sure soon enough, like the vol the volume will come back to normal and we'll just start. Um, Getting moves at around like 6 30 to 8 again to 9 again right but right now with everything going on right now this is a lot of volume so person push at whatever time it wants to push we can literally push at 1 2 p.m you know so we're broken to news um my current use uh trade domain so if you do in the chat exhibition point broker you should get my broker What up, cake? Can I get can I get MT4 into five on my laptop? Yeah, you can. Let's go to your broker website and there should be a link to download down MT4 into five. I think every broker has a different um, meta trader. 
or their own uh, meta trader you can download. Can you explain the fake out? I don't understand from the playbook. Yeah, so I have a video on fake outs. Just do um go on my my YouTube and then search up or here I'll I'll link it for you. Here, do exclamation point fake out. This video should pop up in the chat. How to avoid false breakouts in Forex 2020. I did this video in December. Um and top tier video guys, top tier video. It's like you can't you can't avoid fake outs guys. Like you can't 100% avoid them, but you can increase the chances of you avoiding them. And like this video here, it was like maybe like a year in the works. Like because we we learned how to avoid fake outs. I think it was February 2021, right? And like basically a year after we um like I realized or we really realized that a lot of our trades um that we caught that we were caught in 2021 were or began 2021 and 2020 were fake or fake outs. So yeah, go watch that video if you guys want to learn how. Are you still on gold? Um I'm expecting price to come down. Yeah, I'm expecting price to flip bearish on the forward counter here, which will flip bearish on the daily time frame at the same given time as the daily time frame is bearish today. But um, it won't be any sells for me until you break below like 1932 here. I really want to see a support break right around here. This is just a mini range we're in. If that breaks, then you're looking for price to drive down towards the bottom of the range, down at like 1927. But just be patient right now. Until then, anything can happen, right? Yeah, I'll move. I guess I move my support down here just to show it. Not bad. But yeah, this one hour count here closes back into the range, right? So expect this one hour count to create a top wake. Maybe tap this resistance level around these areas here. And then as you flip bearish, you could maybe expect price to drop down towards the support. I just need a closure below this my support here, and I should be good. Because this is a very minor but decent support level here, looking left. Definitely want a closure. Watching the stream on our screen, then got a fake of it on the left. Hey, it's fire. That's fight. What up, Sensei? What's going on? Sell gold on. Push a P. Hey, Nor. Appreciate a tier two. Tier two. Damn. So, guys, we're getting more tier twos now. So, maybe like we can start doing like some random, random um, Asian session now. Streams. It's, it'll be like once in a while where we do you know, it. won't be every day, obviously, but it'll be very short and quick. It will be like just over our breakdown. And if we enter a trade, then we enter on stream, right? During the Asian session. But, yo, appreciate that tier two, man. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being here today. Much love. Yo, Warcos, join a Zoom call. You wouldn't feel comfortable taking buys above 154.932 on GJ? Um, uh, I mean, the daily is bullish. So, buys above this resistance right here, right? Uh, 932. It's not bad. It's not bad. I, I might consider it. Yeah, it's, it's a range we're definitely breaking into. And you have like 25 pips to the resistance. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. I, I may consider it. Maybe. Come on. Redraw these zones here. And then you have more buys above this resistance here. Not bad, yeah, I might consider that because this is your support down right here, right here now that we're rejecting off of. This is just a range that we're in. So if you end up closing above 154976, you can look to drive up. Yeah, it's valid. It's definitely valid. It's for sure valid. It'll be the four count flip too. Four count will then be flipping bullish. And um, you can probably expect it to drive up. Yeah, not bad. I think I, I think trading is like art to me. It's like art because in art, it's like you're using 
um i guess art to tell a story right and in, in trading it's like you're, you're just your breakdown should be able to tell a story as well Does that make sense or am i tripping <laughs> let's see No trade now, not yet. We're looking for sells on the GJ below 154, 428, and buys below 154, 976 for, um, for GJ buys. And then for gold, we're looking for sells in this in this area. Yeah, so sells could be a very soon here on, on gold. I'm looking at maybe uh, 730 you're looking at probably, but I need a closure below here, below 19, um, 1932 here. All right, look, look left. We closed bearish, yes, back into the ranch, but we're closing right at the support. We're just in the range right now. Be cautious. Good morning, TT. What's going on? Good morning, Sharif. Um, I average thirty percent a month. We average thirty percent a month. You can check my Instagram story. We did a full year of uh, results, basically, like ten months of results. So you can go check it out. So um, so I have until like I guess I said I was gonna uh, do this again and starting like uh quarter two so april uh and you might we might do them from i might do it for a year i might just do it from like april to like december or april april until quarter four so quarter two and two and three i'll cover but quarter four i'll probably just chalk it so considering that guys not bad but like doing this is just like the reason why I like it's just i did it for a year it's just very uh it's like draining it's like it doesn't really like help me it more so helps you guys like you know, or I guess like some of you guys like get motivation from it or I can show you guys how like managing risk and um, taking one, two trips a day can go a long way. Right. And not taking any impulse entries can go a long way, but mm, it's not really uh, useful to be honest, but do you start with, you start with small capital? Of course, I think my like biggest deposit when I first started was like around four five k i think what happened to my, what happened to my razor keyboard what happened here i fucked up my mouse i sold gold nice i mean yeah this count this count could reject her yeah if it rejects um, you could continue down towards the uh, 1929.170 here, guys. When did, when did I do that breakdown at? I'm sure it's called. Um, gold breakdown at 6.40 a.m. Eastern. What up, Wix? Yo, yo. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. It's good I'm to be back. back. It's good to be no. back. <laughs> I'm so tired. Tired? I'm awake. Yo, yeah. I had, yeah, last night, finally, I think six hours of sleep. Finally. Like, like six hours. Of sleep. No wake, no waking up, like just straight up. Yeah, for the first time like a week. I don't know why. This week I was I usually sleep through the night, but this week was weird for some reason. What time did I text you? Like um two thirty two twenty-three. I was asleep. I was knocked like a baby. Yeah, I went, I fell asleep at like three thirty. I got in at like midnight. I fell asleep at like three thirty. And then just woke up. Three hours of sleep in two days. It's crazy. Yeah, you need to catch up tonight, man. Yeah, I'm not even like tired, like physically. I'm just trained. Hit a record, bro. What record? Or one and zero? That was um, that was Monday. We took we took a trade this this March. Right here, you could uh, check the link out. Trade taken? You mean? No, trade taken is not there too, right? It's clear too. Um, 
why do you write previous breakdown down because um the previous breakdown is for those people who come late to the streams so if you come late to the stream you can watch my, my most recent breakdown no nah, previous breakdown i just wrote i, I just wrote that down at 6 40. nev but yeah it's for people who come late to the stream and just want to like you know they they missed the analysis from earlier so i just give the timestamp so they can go back and watch it how much do you risk per trade one percent two percent percent yo wix you see this um you see this four hour candle here this one hour candle so early earlier on earlier on the one hour candle had no bottom wick right this bearish candle that closed bearish it had no bottom wick and then it closed the last like five minutes back into the range which is expected um, and now i wanted it to close bottom wick. i wanted it to close below here but i think if you close below here today below 19, 1932 you have clean traffic mm -hmm. until this support now right at like 19 now which is the four which is also the four kind of bottom wick as well just have so, a hard time believe, believing that after every night of shelling new york's gonna open bear on gold i feel like but, uh then yeah me too like the daily is bearish but we close like respecting that support yeah so it's like it's like like look left too like we there's a resistance there and we close respecting it i don't know so it's gonna be interesting today that's why I have just like I have my safe buys above like 1939 here. I'm just gonna avoid these two ranges. That's my plan. And then sells like I'm looking for sells too, but it's gonna be below like 1932 here. So let's see. If you look left as well, like every time we broke below 1932, I know Marcus is looking at this for sure. But every time you break below 1932, you were able to break below the range you close below you drove down to the bottom range you, you broke below here you came all the way down you rejected this resistance you came down you closed below here you came down towards your minimum right here came down for the range so i'm pretty sure this kind of also would have came down if i had a bottom wick too but i had no bottom wick so then it came up right but overall like every time it came down for the rest of the range so if you close below 32 um i will be attempting sales That four hours is so strong at that resistance. It didn't even close bullish above. You know, two hours left. I'm not sure how TD looks. I think TD is um. How does TD look right now, X? Like it's got a bigger spread than you. Oh, TD hasn't flipped as well. Okay. Yeah, TD flip is. Oh yeah, TD just opened. TD flip is gonna be a one hour flip. One hour, yeah. Okay, dope. And then the last one closed Doji, and the previous one closed no top wick. So you know what that means? Interesting. Yeah, on, on TD, it's kind of closing back in range, but uh, there's a little support right where it's closing. But the actual full range, that red, the bearish candle brought us back in. You see how it respected the support, the major support. Once this flips, it's going to drive down. If it flips. Do you ever scalp? If so, what approach do you take scalping? Well, of course we scalp. We, don't, we may not be hyper scalpers. I remember back in the day, I used to be an over trader, right? I used to be a scalper at the same time. So I'll take like maybe 20, 30 positions a day. And then my excuse for that was, well, I'm a hyper scalper. The fuck does that mean? <laughs> you know, like I'm a hyper scalper. Uh... Hi, my name is Don, and I'm an over trader. No, nah, I'm a hyper scalper. No. <laughs> <laughs> a hyper scalper. I remember that. That was an excuse me. I used to give myself for being an over trader. You know the term one minute man? Yo, you, you know where it came from? You know how Kodak says, I'm a suburban dude. It's like, I'm a hyper scalper. <laughs> dude. I'm a hyper scalper, dude. <laughs> Come on down. Yo, now, Bill, was it you who asked why I have trades? Uh, why I have trades? Uh, breakdown there. Yeah. So you asked. May I ask why you write down previous breakdowns on the screen? And then I said, well, because for people who come late and they miss the breakdown, you can go back and watch it. And then then you asked the question, why not consider a buy above 1934? That was in the breakdown. That was no, that was in the breakdown. I just said, brother. Come on, go back to 934. It's because it's um, 
it's gonna be i mean i guess we form our new range now because this wasn't here before so i guess you now you can look for buys but very the, the update kind of updated now but or the breakdown kind of updated now with this being a range here so range one is here now range two is here buys would be valid here um but i think you need a closure and on top of that you're gonna need a bottom wick form there i'm gonna wait for a one hour closure for one buys above here though i'm much more comfortable with that yeah because earlier on it was different earlier on we had no one hour bottom wick but that was before bear closure Can you do US 30? In a bit, man. I'm kind of locked in here right now. Let's see. If this 30 minute candle closes above and the one hour stops no bottom wick, I'm expecting the next 30 minute candle to close back into the range. And then ADM, we might have something that looks like this to drop down. But to you guys, let's, let's see what the last 10 minutes has for us. Yeah, I don't look for trades, just look for me, exactly. That's all that is. That's all that is. If you guys want the free playbook, go download it on controlfx.com. It's a free four, four page PDF I put together for you guys. Um, when it comes down to my entries and setups, these are all the entries I take myself and all the same entries I've been taking for the last two years on the stream. And for myself, there's no, there's no air trades outside of these trades here. I promise you guys that there's no impulse entries. There's no, you know, there's no ore blocks. There's none of that. It's just strictly, these are just the trades that I take. And yeah, that's it. Go, go cop it. All the proceeds are split amongst the DVS members. <laughs> Free 99. Free 99. Free 99. Free? Free, free, free? Free 99. Free, 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 free. free, free. <laughs> Did you see that commercial? Where all they say is free? They're like talking to each other, but all they say is free. No, free, free. Talking about. free, free. <laughs> Call Ted. He'll come if he comes. If he comes, then you know, I'll give him the link. Ted held it down yesterday. Yeah, shout out Ted. <laughs> came by. Um, came by on a bad day, though. This is no trade, but at least he helped some of you guys stay out of trades. <laughs> that's funny how like the two biggest days i think had no trades the two biggest viewership yeah I, I think like of all time like every time we reach like the high like peak of our viewers like we usually i think we took one trade one break even trade like maybe uh last oh, yeah, yeah, yeah i remember that I yeah remember that, but yeah typically it's like it's it was a slow day i think we took it late too or so. <laughs> hey ted's here good morning ted ted's always here chat you know like Reaping. Yeah. We missed the third person. How long have you been trading? I've been trading for since 2018, so around three years. Almost four years here. I'm just waiting for the. Is that the real Uncle Ted? Yeah, I'm waiting for that too. <laughs> is that the real Uncle Ted? Come on, I can't be the real Uncle Ted, man. Why is why is the Uncle Ted of access stream? <laughs> Why is he on the stream? <laughs> I think it's, time, it's a good time to buy gold. Hey man, you can, you can take whatever positions you want to take, right? Um, I'm just, the thing with gold here is just, I'm just uh, cautious of this one hour candle. It closed heavily bare the last one hour candle. So this candle here, I'm gonna wait for the one hour counter close. If we close bullish in 37 minutes here at ADM, then we can look to drive up. But if you close below at ADM, then we're gonna stay in this range. So I'll wait for the one hour counter here. It's very key. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that should be interesting. 
Thoughts on news today? Will it affect the markets? Um, yeah, you have news at 10 a.m. and you have news at 8 30. Of course, it'll affect the markets. But the question is, like, how much will it affect the markets? Right? How much volume will that bring in with everything going on around right now? So, similar yesterday, you had AP yesterday. You expected something decent, but with the whole Ukraine Russian news going on, you had um, that taking over. That has the catalyst. So, this wouldn't be the main catalyst for the day if you do drive. But hey, I guess we'll never know. You know? Yeah, I guess we'll never know. What Come would on. I do if I didn't win? I, I guess, guess we'll never No ADP today? Oh, sorry. No, that's ADP is um not today. Sorry. I had that marked up from yesterday. Let me just take that off for you guys. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Today's focus. No ADP. You have other stuff though. I can't down the whole playbook. It's just the first picture. I can't see the other pages. Is it just me or are there are people like me? Um, You got to just refresh it maybe and just do it again. There's two links. There's a link to the playbook and there's a link to like the playbook chart. There's no other people like you. There's only three of you. There's only three of your messages. What's that chart called, guys? The playbook chart? Um. Command? You know what? I don't know. Let me check messages of cake. I forgot what it was called. What a title it has. Oh yeah, trading setups. There you go. This is the trading setup one. This is just the page. This page. Yeah, this is the page you can just make it. You make it as a poster and hang up on your room or whatever. But yeah, these guys, these trades guys, like it's not. It's not the typical like this chart here. Although it looks like it, it's not the typical like pattern chart where it's like. Oh, um, if you get uh, this, uh, double to oh, whatever, doji, this, at least to this, you know, it's, this is just, these are actual setups here. So it's just stuff that we, we've been taking. There's more to it. It's not just like wait for this to happen and take a position. It's a lot more to it. Um, but this is just the, the, uh, I guess, um, something you can refer to when it comes to our traits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't you add more pairs to your watch list? Um, because these are the two pairs that I'm very comfortable trading and it's the pairs that I've been trading for the last two, three years. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's why I see it. I used to trade US 30, yes. Those are gonna be asking me questions about US 30. Yeah, I'm gonna, I used to trade US 30, but um, I think one of my brokers stopped offering it to me. So I stopped trading it for quite some time and I never, I never returned, but Maybe one day, maybe end of this year or end of next year, we may um, add back to my watch list, but you know. For now, these two pairs are wonderful. Yeah, Tess says um, he might be busy, so he, he might pop up, he might not. I send the Zoom call if he wants to. What's your story? Um, We'll save that for another video, man. It's too long. Oh no, the, po the, po the podcast has it. I think the podcast of me and Marco's is coming today. What's your story? 
Well, for Don, it all started back in 2001. 2000. 2000, sorry. <laughs> it, it all started on a nice... Uh, wait, when is your birthday? April 10. On a nice uh, spring day in April. <laughs> Don's first words were... Wah! No, no, no. My first words were... Um... All right, guys, looking for DJ? no, no. All right, guys, looking for a position gold. here. <laughs> Don's first words were gold, mama, gold. <laughs> You're two thousand, yeah, I'm two thousand, baby. Where'd you get two thousand and one from? I don't know. I'm bad at math. I don't even know why I'm trading. Because <laughs> you're twenty one, right? Yeah, I'm 21. Turn 22 this year. So 2022 minus 21 would give you. Yep, yeah, I'm turning 22 this year. <laughs> yeah, but we weren't considering those things. We were just doing basic math. 2022, you're 21. Right. We, we do the difference. You get 22, you get 2001. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be exact on on those on those on your uh, birthday buy stops. Birthday buy stops. If I had to go for my birthday, we've been rich. <laughs> oh yeah. Could have full margin. Like, <laughs> as soon as soon as you came out, you should have been like, "Mama, hit by." Hey, hey guys, um, I know you guys are watching this. I know you guys are like, "Yo, Don, Don, are, are you guys in positions there? Are you looking for buys there?" Nope. No, the reason is because the one hour hasn't closed yet. I'm waiting for the one hour close. On top of that, there's no one hour bottom no work bottom. here. So if we end up closing back into the range, this goes back to what I said earlier. It's gonna be a thirty minute closure back into the range. It'll be a one hour fake out or a thirty minute fake out at eight a.m. to drive down. And then the one hour can flip. So just be uh be cautious here. But um, with us closing above, yeah, you would expect it to drive up, but it comes down to um range one, range two for me, and just a bunch of other things that come into play here, which is the bottom wick here. But this is a nice bottom wick though. If if, if this was like a like if, we, if there was no issue with the bottom wicks here, I'll place a buy stop right here. Stop last appeal is kind of low, TP is up here. This is a clean position, but it's gonna be very difficult here. Like I, I really want to break out these ranges here. Yeah, we had a buy stop on GJ in London that never activated. Oh, with the stream? Yeah, I went to JXTR's stream. We had buy stops and uh, it never activated. It came back in range, just ranged. I went to a lease game yesterday, chat. I went to a, like, a freaking lease game just to get, just to lose 5 1 to Buffalo. Oh my god. Buffalo is ass, uh, Wix9. Yeah, I know. Bro, we lost 5 1. It was so bad. I was like, I thought it was going to be a decent game because every time I play Buffalo, it's always like a close game. But I went to the game and it's like, bruh. That's what happens when two garbage teams play. Two garbage teams? <laughs> We're fourth in the league. Stop it. Yeah, we're fourth in the league. In the whole league, we're fourth. I don't like Toronto. <laughs> I don't like them. Oh, and how are you fourth in the league? The Rangers are fourth in the league. Stop messing with my team. What do you mean? We're okay. So we're we're third in our conference because we have some o o overpowered Florida teams taking over. And how then. Many we are 70, 74. 74. Tampa, Tampa first place at 76. And then in the in the West. Where are the Rangers? Yeah, Where so we're Rangers? fourth. Look, look. One, two, uh, three. And then in the West has 84. The, the team second has 70. So we're, we're ahead of that the Rangers? team. Rangers, my friend, are down here. They got 73. Oh, wait, we're not 74. We're not fourth. I lie. We're like fifth. Uh, yeah, Penguins, Hurricanes. No. Hey, fake out avoided here, guys. Maybe. Oh, we definitely avoided the fake out. We're gonna avoid it. Yep, that 15 broke the lows now. We warned you guys about this, right? And now we're gonna drive down. And now we're gonna drive down towards the one hour lows and the one hour can flip here. This is good too. GG's driving up. We might get a closure, but we need a closure. 970. On GJ above 950. 970. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, you're right. If you can just mirror the candles and not be anywhere in the wicks. On a buy, on a sell, it would be 950. <laughs> Good eye. Good eye. Huh. Imagine you do a live trade. Hey, um, if I do an in-person course, guys, um, um, fuck, I don't know, UK and New York. Like, I think those two. Maybe, maybe Miami. Miami was like second, I think, in that poll. But if I go to Miami, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be like a three or five day course, in-person course, and it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be my, it's gonna be my second, um, second in-person course. Where would you rather be for five days? I'd rather be in New York for five days, but New Miami, I... <laughs> New York, you want to be for like an evening. Five no, days. no, no. I love New, New York. York. I love New York. I love New York. I think I love New York because like Toronto with me. But Miami, it's it, it, it's a different breed. I wouldn't mind Miami too for five days, like. But no, if we do it, I was gonna say if we do do it, it's gonna be during like every day from like Monday to Friday, I think. It's gonna be from like 8 a.m. So we'll, we'll be there for the NY session and we might get some positions. <laughs> you guys will hear the all right guys getting a position here in real life. Moving stops breaking here, close in half in real life. As, as Don is getting served, uh, she's, uh, a, she's a runner, she's a track star. And then, and then you hear that in real life Bloody as well. Mary. <laughs> you hear that in real life as well. Uh, well, Don's getting served the Bloody Mary on the beach. And hitting a runner. West Palm. I'm not driving an hour <laughs> to the shit in Miami. New York to see right now with COVID restrictions. Well, Canada's the same thing. I've been, I, I'm living that lifestyle over here in Canada already. So New York is definitely better. We, they have, I think they lifted restrictions today though. To, um, starting um the first or the third in New York, I think they lifted restrictions in New York. You can gotta wear um or you can gotta yeah. be vaxxed no more to go places. You love being locked up. I'm locked up. Can't, how does this song go? Oh, let me out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you guys need to do something about Trudeau. That guy is... <laughs> Justin. What's the best session to trade? London or New York Open? Um, Best session to trade for me would be the... Uh, New Green York. Line. Yo guys, if you guys avoid fakeouts today, if you guys avoid fakeouts or learn how to avoid fakeouts, the crazy thing is, um, um, someone literally asked like how you avoid fakeouts earlier, and we explained this situation here live, and it happened live. Pat yourself on the back today if you learn how to avoid fakeouts. It's nothing crazy like you didn't catch any pips or anything, but you did learn about the range one, range two breakouts, and this can help you in, for, in future trades. This wasn't easy though. This took two. This is two years in the making. As simple as it looks, it was, it was like a year and a half in the making. I did not know probably how to the, avoid fake outs for a whole year. Probably the best concept we have. For sure. And, and now we're and flipping on a one hour. Even, and, and it's not even a trading concept. It's a, you know, it's a, I guess it's a pull back maybe concept. There's a time to attack and there's a time to pull back. And this tells us when to actually pull back and not attack yeah as soon as as soon as uh, we opened with no bottom wick and as soon as we realized we're in range one going to range two i wish a driver i would let it close first it yeah close, then we need a top wick and then we can drop down i want a one hour closure so we can have with the previous bottom wick or 30 yeah i think like one hour next one hour closure here's the thing guys like look going back to what i said earlier like we're driving down now we're flipping on a one hour candle go back on a four candle what's happening we're flipping bearish at the same given time going on a daily what's happening we're flipping bearish right so that fake out leads you to the daily candle flipping bearish and that's what we always discuss like whenever whenever people ask yo don like the higher time frame like the daily and the weekly has a top bottom wick what do you do and i say well if you see the small time frame show if the small time frame shows you signs of us flipping on a higher time frame, you'll see it. And this is a great example of a small time frame leading you to the higher time frame here. I mean, you, you'll realize that, that if the smaller time frames lead into the higher time frames, they all start to align. And then the higher time frames start leading back into the smaller aligned time frames. It's a very, it's a very 
interesting concept once you see it happening once you see, once you realize what's happening behind the candles and uh, it, it, you can actually start telling a story and the cool thing the cool thing and the important thing is that every time frame at some point will be in the same direction and you really want to pay attention to that because once all your time frames line up that's when you're really ahead that's when you should really be looking for a position it's the number one thing i tell new people new traders make sure like if you were going to give me a piece of advice what would it be it would be that make sure all your time frames are lining up uh, if you're all your time frames are lining up the chances of your trade of going in your direction with all the time frames just the probability is that much higher and you'll see them all lining up because they all start flowing into each other <laughs> yes sir Yes, these should sir. be courses like these should be le legitimately courses in college this economics taxes <laughs> in a million years back probably uh, finance like because like what are you doing this tax season <laughs> you know gonna save some money doing it yourself <laughs> but in school we fucking learn sine and cosine and fucking parallelograms and like, like, parallelograms are coming in real handy this parallelogram season. Right? Parallelogram season. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm gonna do my parallelograms really well. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you need, you need the higher terms to align. And, like, I think this year, like, we... I think we really, like, we did a better job this year and last year of looking at the higher time frames. Like last year, we always like did a breakdown from the higher time frames, but this year it was like we took advantage of like the four hour a lot this year and the daily a lot, a lot more. And we anticipated like the daily and four, like, you know, things like small things like that. We're a lot sharper this year, but you can, that's, you can tell that it's, uh, you know, we're a lot more patient and we're taking a lot less trades, but the trades we are taking are, are higher quality trades than last year. Yep. I mean, if we were doing the same shit as last year, then there's no growth. There's no, you know, what, what are we doing here? What are we teaching you? Just same, same things, same concepts that have been taught all over and over and over. The, the whole point is to grow and develop and optimize it for yourself. Yo, this is this. These are the last year stats, by the way. Updated, guys. No, it's not updated yet, but um, up to June or something. This is like to G July, yeah. So this is this is January last year. Oh no no! This is all year last year. I'm tripping. That's what I'm gonna say. All of last year. This is January last year. Seven wins, ten losses. We kept our losses small though. Biggest loss last year, uh, was like maybe ten pips in January. So, it was, we, but then again, last year was different from this year. The ranges were completely different. So, but yeah, forty nine pips last year for January. February was like nine fifty five pips. It's on stream by the way. March was number five. April was 278. So April was when we stopped taking impulse centuries, I think. Or I think it was May it was. But whenever we stopped taking impulse centuries was when our win rate went up and did a lot better. All right, August 41, July on stream was 980. Um, June was 83. So we're also missing days too. But um, that's last year. And then this is this year so far. I know it's Akon. Oh, your stream is like 30 minutes delayed. Refresh your stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, not let me out. He's still locked up. <laughs> the sad thing is he's only going to realize it in about 30 minutes that I say, hey, <laughs> refresh your stream. <laughs> he misses on an hour. He's on fucking America Online. <laughs> you ever had? Oh no, you you. America Online was before you were even born, right? You in the dial-up internet. Bro, I was born in the year two thousand, so. Remember, I, you I had to heard... make a phone call to actually be connected to the internet. <laughs> yeah, bro. Um, I grew with Wi-Fi, so <laughs> I'm grateful. <laughs> I, I I'm not, you know, I'm grateful for growing growing up with Wi-Fi. <laughs> I grew up with one button. Oh, no, he's a, he's up to date. All right, he caught up. Yeah, there's some shit going on in the chat. 
where can i see the 2021 xl um I'll, I'll post it once it's done right now we're still working on it we still got some months to cover but yeah well we'll um we'll get you guys that don't worry do you have a rejection at 1930.777 um yeah my support right around here i want to see us close below there on this hourly candle or it's either we got a third closure below there or we get a one hour closure below one 932.257 i'm fine either way the whole idea behind this trade is a forward candle believe it or not guys right believe it or not it's just the forward candle is at this resistance and it's gonna flip and by the end of this forward candle here you might see it just boop, use rejection back into the range here so expecting this to happen <laughs> buys on gj aren't bad here buys above here to closure close Eyes above aren't bad. 15 minutes left for a one hour closure. It was driving up. I was thinking it will, it will get there or for the 8 a.m. volume. But like all of this setting up pretty nicely. See how we're kind of ranging, pulling back. Why is that? Because the volume isn't there yet. Hey, the 8 a.m. candle should, should really drive if we close back below within we close back within range because now you're getting a setup an entry and you're getting the confirm you know the the safety of volume driving it instead of it just trickling down are you waiting for the 15 and 30. um the 15 isn't bad here we close hour. below but um we're waiting for a 30 slash one hour um because they both close at the same time because uh it's it's the last 15 the hourly and i'm expecting this last 15 to be a pull back to give you that bottom wick for ADM candle to drive. Um, and also the ADM candle is the, is the New York Open as well. So it's a win-win in our books. In my books. Yeah, don't don't be impulsive. Don't start entering right now because this could easily just pull back. We haven't closed below here yet. Oh, they're talking about 15. <laughs> mm. Are you gonna be live for NFP news tomorrow? Of course. Of course we'll be live. This is on book, guys. This one hour candle could literally pull back here. This 15 can close above 1932 here. It's the one hour candle. And then we just we'll have a one hour doji, which kinda sucks. If that were to happen. Are you trying SMC? No. I haven't tried um Smart Money Concept. I know what it is though. Actually no, no I have tried Smart Money Concept, that's what you're talking about, yeah. I have, I have, I have for sure. I try a lot, I try a lot. I do what I do now for a reason, though. If you guys are asking, what's SMC? Smart money concept. Smart money concepts. Oh, yeah, it is what it, I, it's actually that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, that's the, that could be smart money concept. <laughs> have tried aura block? Yes, I have tried aura blocks. Returns last month around 45, 50% around there, or I think 450 something, uh, 55, 45, 55 around there. And then how much do you risk per trade? One or two percent per trade. Last month, I wouldn't have, I, I would have probably finished the month with like maybe 30%, like 30, 30 something, high 30s if it wasn't for runners, but two runners last month was pretty good. Yo, can you believe we're already in March, man? Can you believe that? I can believe it. Can you believe we got a jacuzzi? <laughs> no, no, how's it go? Can you believe that? Can you believe that, that Kanye video? A jacuzzi? Jacuzzi. How many runners did you have? I had two runners in uh, February. Two runners. I think they came on one day. <laughs> two days. How big is risk per trade? One or two percent risk per trade, John. Risk per trade breakdown given at seven forty-eight. 
Was it worth having runners on those two trades? Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, there were two trades. Runners were, 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 um, were, 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 was worth it last month. Those two runners gave me like an extra 10%. Yeah, those runners were pretty good. But, yeah. <laughs> Wonder Runners were kind of crazy, though. Um, Wonder Runners, we explained it to you guys, I think. That was that that, that day. Well, that that day was very annoying. Um, but I mean, I guess it slid by. Yeah, the the vibes weren't there. Just the runners. Yeah, the vibes were not there. Just the runners. <laughs> just the runners were there. It was on stream too. No, no, it was the day when the stream ended. The stream cut off. We caught seventy <laughs> pips. It was a seventy pip runner, and another runner was uh the hundred pip runner off stream. But um, man, I have I have a video of that day because I, I recorded the day after, like after the stream ended, it disconnected on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm not. It, it, it was chalk. Like I'm not gonna like bother looking back at it. This is it triggers me, man. <laughs> What's your TD password? Donvoltrades.com. Why you have less subscriber when you have better knowledge? than a 100k subscriber mentor you know man um at the end of the day i'm a good mentor it's up to you where you, you know, yeah where you, where, you, where you help yourself you know i'm sure there's plenty of good mentors out there and you know but people real recognize real so it time tells over time you know i'm just i'm not too worried about like where i'm at where i am and how many subscribers I got right now, or how many someone else got? It's like I'm just there's no competition for me. It's just kind of like I'm just trying to provide value at the end of the day. If people fuck with us, people fuck with us. People enjoy our content, enjoy our value, enjoy our trades, take on stream. You know, like it's that's all that matters. And the rest will come after. Like I'm not I'm not too worried about like the subscriber and stuff. I guess I said I said it before too. At one point, like we had like eight viewers, and you know a lot of people were averaging like four like a thousand viewers, two thousand viewers, right? Um. There's plenty of people here that don't trade like us and are just here for the vibes. Yeah. But you gotta give credit where it's due though. People don't have 100k subscribers for no reason. Right? I mean, some might, some might buy them, but for the most part, a lot of people just earn them. And you gotta give props where it's due. Respect to those guys for the hard work and shit they put into the, into, um, the community. They're helping, they're helping the community as much as I am helping, helping the community as well. So. It takes time. I feel like people don't, I feel like people don't like to ask questions in the chat and they don't read them. This is the fifth time he's asking this question. How much percentage of returns you made last month and how much you risk per trade? I answered that like six times in the last hour. <laughs> you should be asking is what are you looking for here and why are you looking for it? What's going on in the market right now that we're looking for a, for a sell? Like that's what you should be asking. You should be figuring out why we're selling why the market is forming this way and how we're going to exploit it those, those questions help you like the answers to those questions should help you the answer to how much returns don made last month I don't, will not help you make the same return no or a question of how long did it become profitable you know, a lot of people think, I think the process they go through is, okay, if it took Don eight months, you know what? I'm, I'm, I might fuck around till I reach eight months and then I might start trying. It's, um, that's the issue of asking those questions. Like, it doesn't really affect you at all, to be honest, because everyone comes from a different place. Everyone comes from a different um, environment and everyone's just different overall. Like, my discipline is nowhere near your discipline. Or you might be more disciplined than me starting off. I was not disciplined at all. It took me a long time to overcome those challenges. Might not take me a long yeah. time. All right, if you have like some, go on. I mean, we've lived through different environments. We have different experiences through childhood, like everything that, you know, our opinions, everything, the way we do things, the way we are, you know, the way we go about our day, that's all, it's all formed, you know, as we're growing up, those are all habits formed as we're getting, as we're getting to, to this point, you know. I'm here to roast Wix9. I don't even trade. Cool. Six minutes, guys, for positions here. Maybe. Marcos is fucking pissed today. <laughs> He's having a bad morning. <laughs> Hey, 
What you think about a GA cell? I mean, good idea. Send a chart in. I'm starving. How long is that train? Yo, I, Marcos, I thought you were like going to be on today and you weren't going to be on tomorrow. Yeah, that's what he said. Do you speak Vietnamese? Uh, he said he was going to be on a train, so he'll stop by or something. How do you join a Zoom? Um, the only way to join a Zoom is if you have uh, if you have access to the course, unfortunately, or your Uncle Ted or someone, like or or like you know you sometimes if you're a mod you have access as well, or if I just message you you have access. But for the most part, course members minimum requirement. Either course members or fifty thousand followers. <laughs> no, yesterday, yesterday Zoom call. I can tell I was on the stream and then random people who I've like who have the course never join a zoom call. They join a zoom call <laughs> yesterday for the first time ever. And then I'm like, whoa, 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 where, 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 where did you come from? <laughs> it's like, were they talking? Yeah, they're talking to him. Like, I never heard your voice. You didn't say good morning to me. Word. I'm fine. <laughs> <Disrespect. I'm> a... <laughs> I don't really the care. Disrespect. Good morning, by the way. <laughs> Good morning. Mm, mm. Yo, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I don't want to be those people. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. GM, GM. Yeah. Don, I sent a chart to Discord. Can you check it out? Um. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm about, I was on to charts here. We have five minutes left. I can check it real quick before uh, we have some trades at ADM here, maybe. So, the first chart is going to be, this chart is gold. Um, you have got a buy here. Okay, so the issue with the buys here is the one hour candle, I can see why you cannot enter. You gotta put more text on the chart, by the way. But going off of what I see here, you took a buy based off the fact that you were at support here, right? Stop loss, pretty aggressive, current candle and a bearish candle low, which is pretty aggressive because if you break this low, it's not really breaking structure because this one hour candle is expected to flip because the previous candle is bearish. So a very aggressive stop loss, but um, entering a break of the candle high, it's um, it's a very risky trade, I'll say. It's not that it's, it's because the one hour is heavily bearish and it's back to the range of the like left, right? There's a resistance there. So if anything sells on the flip coming down, to fill this range was a lot cleaner than the buys, but again, I mean, hey, you close three percent, you got ten pips, you want to trade, right? So that's all that matters. But just be aware next time of uh, how the hour count closes and how the higher time frame looks and the four hour and daily and all that. Just be aware. Oh wow, guys, we might get a closure. I need this count to close, and I need this count to leave a decent wick here. That's all we need. Yeah, it looks like stocks gonna be like massive though. Let's see, oh yeah, you, as you guys can see, the four candle was now flipping bearish, which we explained earlier. At the same given time, the daily candle was flipping bearish as well, and that was all because the one hour candle came back into this rancher. W, check your chart. I got you in a second here. Um, next chart this is range one. How buys above after closure, yeah. Buys are valid there. Sells below there. Um, wait, how can we have range one here if the bias for day is bearish off the daily candle being bearish? That's my question. Overall, I, can't, I like the way your levels are drawn. Makes sense, yeah. These are some uh, some nice levels drawn. And what is this? Buys above here, range one, and then sells below here, closure for GJ. Nice. Solid. This chart over here. Fake out on top of the range. Retest if the candle closes below support and breakout. Um, so sells basically sells for you if we were to close below uh, the support level. Or what you have a you have a buy limit, a sell limit here? I'm not too sure what you're looking for. He says sells, but sells for what? Um what is this? Close below one hour, thirty minute resistance, wait for a can to, to form ten top wick, ten wick up, then TP 10 pip is enough for me. Damn, that's a very aggressive stop loss, man. That's a very aggressive stop loss. <laughs> Suicide boys. 
<laughs> um, yeah, that's a very um, tough stop loss because it's not the current kind of high. It's just the middle of a candle. It's not a logical stop loss. I'll say. I think a more logical stop loss would be the previous kind of high. It's a bigger stop loss, yes, but it makes more sense because we're actually breaking structure if you break, if you hit that stop loss. Here, it's like you can you can hit, break this high and still respect this high and still flip bearish, right? So it's a, there's a difference between having a stop loss, like an impossible stop loss, and a and a like a very um, logical stop loss. This is good, guys. If you flip it on a daily time from here, we're probably going to come down for the rest of the range. You have like 180 pips left towards the next support. And then the forward candle has clean traffic until 118.23 now. It's for, it's for a 50 pip range. How big are stops? 50 pips for a TP of 60 pips. Not bad. 50 for 60? <laughs> 50 for 60. I think you got to close below here, though. I think you really got close below the support. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and you close right as right at it. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, the hourly close below. So there's that. One hour is valid. Um, I'm expecting this count, guys, to create a top wick, and then once it creates a top wick, you let's see. TP is going to be down here overall, and by the time you tap this minor support level, how much is this giving you? It's going to give you around 15 pips. So you could take advantage of that range. Yeah, I think you need a decent top wick though. Once you get a decent top wick, we'll enter sell stops. All right. On the breakout lows, on the flip. Um, but yeah, expect this kind of the drive here. Off the four. Yeah, expect it to still come up and... Hopefully you reject off like nine nineteen thirty two thirty. Let's get a decent top wick. Collect those orders and drive down. One hour fake out here, guys. One hour fake out. Very clean. You, yeah. You're close below, not too far below though. Like barely close below. The four count here is, is really my um the go to here. Yeah, the go to here for me. <laughs> yeah. What's this, Philly Fallish? Yeah, there's a topic. So let's see. South stops in the flip of the lows will give you how many pips? From here to here, that's like seven, eight pips. We're gonna have to be very aggressive with stops because there's happening a minor support there. And the thing with this is that you're going to have to use current candle lows or current candle highs and stops because it's a new one hour candle and you can't use the previous kind of high. It's going to be 50 pips. Previous 30 minute high is going to be 50. Eh, you know what? It's not bad. I guess you have like a little one to one 64 50, a little above a one to one. Um, let's see. If we if you get a decent topic, I might consider using current counter stops instead. If you get like a, a, a rejection off this zone, and price drives up, creates a topic there. We can use current counters instead. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be twenty six pip stops if that were to happen, which is not bad. Oh, there it is. All right, guys, I'm gonna place a sell stop here on the break of this low here at at 1929 here all right expect this kind of flip bearish and drive once you actually flip bearish and break the lows um yeah that's decent flip of lows sell stops Thinking of the flip. you think of a flip that's not bad I'm, since i'm using current count stops i'm just gonna enter the break of lows All right, Please. haven't done this Previous in a while. Scale. Yeah. Why is Warzone one popping up? <laughs> All right. Go sell stops. First candle low. I know it's me current candle low. It's one one pip difference. You know what? Yeah, you're right. Maybe previous candle low actually. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a pip difference. I was looking at that as well, but like. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's it's because of this minor support right around here. I, I really want to take advantage of that level. And from here to here is like eight. And from the break to the low is flip. like six, seven. But from the flip, it's like seven pips. 
from the flip, you're good. From the flip, it's like 10 pips, I think. Yeah, 15 pips to that support. Oh, to the support. I'm talking about to fill the wick. Oh. <laughs> TP is 1923.833's chat. And stop loss is going to be current kind of highs for around like 1932. 32.392. 1921, 1929.62. Oh, I'm I'm a blueberry today, so I'm gonna try. Yeah, I'm I testing know. out. I'm gonna do Nice. Wow, spreads are so small right now, man. Spreads are one 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 point one point one. <laughs> GG spreads are zero point six. Got sell subs here, chat. This is the move we've been waiting for the whole day. Stop loss is gonna be the current kind of highs. Current one hour kind of highs. We, you can use the previous kind of highs if you want to. It's gonna be a better. Uh, R is gonna be like roughly 60 pip stops, or sorry, no, 30 minute stops are gonna be a 55 pip stop, and TP is gonna be down here for 56. If you wanna use the purse kind of high, if you use the current kind of high, it's gonna be a 20 pip stop. A bit smaller, but a bit more aggressive. But the trust here is, is into the one hour candle. Green on top, like once you break the lows. So if you break this low, this is a new one hour high. This is no longer the one hour high. That's the previous high now. Yeah, the flip isn't bad. You enter in the flip wicks? Uh, no, I have my my self stops right now on break of the lows. Yeah, because look, guys, once you come down here and you and you actually flip and you break the four lows, look left. The four lows, what's doing is just it's just, it's just gonna be rejecting that resistance. It's gonna be flipping bearish, and it's probably gonna drive down towards the support level. This being the the rejection. See, this is this is what I was afraid of for it to come down to and not break four lows. lows? Yeah, and come back up. That's why I brought it down to the break of lows. Yeah. Yeah, this four count is just basically this, guys. Like, this is based off the four hour time frame. It's just a range formed. If we're at resistance here and this count has no bottom wick, expecting this count to create a bottom wick. And then we should get a Tempest by then. And the rest should drive to the rest of the range. You have your stops on previous one hour? No, I'm using current one hour. Current. Yeah, current one hour. So it's gonna be a 26 pip stop, 26 27, 27 pip yeah. stop. TP is like 55 pips there. Here we go, 1931. This is where I'd wanted top wick to come up to. 1932, 30, something like that. Yeah, this Go switching up too. I say gold buys will be above one or uh, GJ buys above one five four nine seven nine seven six. Not bad. So we have eight AM volume right now, right? So this candle will technically give us direction and volume here. For the next candle to play off of. <clears throat> yeah. Break even point for me, like I'm expecting price to drive minimum down towards like 1928 here. So 600, that'll be a 10 pit mark. By the time we get that 10 pit mark over here, we'll be risk free and we'll be uh, closing half because we're tapping on minor level of support level or minor level of support. And uh, that's how we're managing our positions here. It's called taking advantage of minor levels, right? And not just ignoring them.
check charts for stream, please. What do you think? Um, so is that the re um, yeah, it's like again, like I think, I think like this, like it's a lot of guessing here. It's a very aggressive because you're guessing where the topic is. Like this camp for all we know could just drove all the way up, right? I mean, it's I get I get the trade. I get to retest that resistance, but just be aware that like it's I rather see the kind of flip and then execute. Like I rather see the confirmation. There's no confirmation that we're gonna flip yet. It's just very aggressive. Like I know it's a wick entry and all that, but it's just very aggressive, right? It's not a bad trade though. That's I remember I, I used to take those trades too. If we um I say if we break the I mean Technically, if you break the one hour high, it's, it's not valid anymore. So I'll leave the sell stops till then. But this is what I mean though, chat. Like taking sells here, just because you're tapping on resistance, it's aggressive because you don't know. This kind of still drive up for all we know. So you, you you really need to break the lows in order for in order to in, in order for it to be a valid trade. If you sold early, then that's a you problem, my friend. <laughs> Gotta be patient here. You can't get overconfident. You have to wait for your actual steps to form. Yeah, if it breaks the one hour high, three minute highs, I'm just gonna delete the sell stops because stops would be like 50 pips by then. But right now it's gonna be a four pip stop, which is good because the steeper the top wick is, the better it is for your current count of stops. Yes, stops are increased, but the um The probability of us driving is a lot greater with all yeah. these orders collecting here. Yeah. They might go it might go all the way up to like 1934 here. And then not break through in highs, just reject that amount of resistance here. Look left, something happened here kinda. This kind of closed bearish below the range, and this next count came up. And then close below, and then next kind just drop down. Like, look how high we came up. Look at all the orders we just caught. If we flip and then we break the low of the previous candle with the 8 a.m. volume on a bearish day, like common sense says, we're going down to 1924. You know, the flip might be valid now. Oh, it's five minutes. I mean, if this five minute closes below uh, 1932 here, we're gonna see the next five minute kind of drop down, guys. And that should lead you to the third minute count flipping as well, right? Same thing, like using the small traffic to our advantage. If this goes below, you have clean traffic to here, which would then activate your sell stops as you're coming down towards that support. Not bad. Buys and gold. Um, buys and gold for me would be above 1939. I'm avoiding these ranges for buys. I think maybe later on buys would be valid above 1934, but you need to close above 1934 for buys. Above 1934, I'll take my buys until like 1939. But whatever's in this range right now is no no, and sells for me are below here, obviously. So these are my trading ranges today. These are my buys for me. These are buys for me, and these are sells for me. And this right here is a no no for me. Or sorry, no. This is a this is a no no. This is valid. Below here. But going back to what Ted said yesterday, like we, we like the same thing we say every day too. Like you gotta be open to, um, to multiple ideas. You gotta have multiple ideas because you can't just marry one analysis. Like yeah, I'm looking for cells here, but I gotta understand as well that cells aren't valid anymore the moment you break this one hour high. Right? Standing goes for buys. Buys are valid if you break this high. If you don't break the high, sells are technically happening right now. And you're expecting like 1932 or 1923. So you gotta, you gotta be open to that. You gotta be okay accepting those things, those factors. Why is that? No, no. We we discussed um, the whole range one, range two, and like the analysis overall today, like I think a couple times. The main analysis was done at 640. We called the fake out and we called the range breaking out as well. And now we're just executing based off the 640 analysis that we had. 
Precious did exactly what we wanted today. So let's go back and watch that if you guys are conf confused about the trade. Yeah, stops aren't bad now. Stops are going to be 38 pips. TP is going to be down here for like 58 pips. So one to one. Let's even get a trade though. I haven't gotten a trade on stream in like days. <laughs> feels like weeks. I took a trade on March 1st, but it feels like weeks. The day before, the trade before that was on the 25th of February. So yeah, it's been quite some time. For sure. What do you think of gold going half risk in this one? Um, yeah, I'm going half risk because stops are twice as big. So yeah, gonna average it out to my fixed lot size, one or two percent risk. They're going half for sure. Yeah, I don't go half risk because it's a low pro low probability trade. Because we don't enter low probability trades. I feel like low probability trades, like entering half risk is kinda it's not it's not like I want to say it's the best idea just because like why would you want to put yourself in a losing situation if you know that there's some risk factors in that trade why would you want to enter the trade in the first place this is real money why would you want to like put yourself in that position to lose money right so whenever we have a low private trade i just kind of just stay out i'm like i just watch it play out um or watch it not play out i stay out but um yeah i never i never like oh you know what it's a risky trade but i'm gonna go half risk or it's a it's a risky trade but i'm gonna go quarter risk Never because of that. We wait. We wait for our our straight solid setups to form, and then we execute. If there's a flaw, I'm staying out. I want the perfect trade for myself. And yes, there's not always a perfect setup. But why would you want to sell down for less? It's, it's not. It's not always a good idea to sell down for less, man. What's it gonna do for you long term? You're just, you're just, you're just increasing or decreasing your win rate, All right? Or your wins, your ROIs. You just turn off a trading dot? No, I don't. Whatever's on my screen is all I use. The breakdown is all based off of candles and structure and support and resistance. Find the man. That's basically it. There's no, there's, there's no fibs. There's no trend lines. There's no indicators. Nothing. It's the same thing we've, we've been doing for the last two years. Yeah, 15 minute here closed. Um, I guess you can say it closed. There's, there's, there's like a 15 minute resistance here, right around here. And I guess you can say you close respecting it. So this 15 if it flips bearish, you can look to, for it to drop down. But if it breaks the highest, which is what I was doing right now, you can pro probably expect it to come up towards like this 30 minute resistance here at this range. So yeah, a top wick is going to be created. A steeper top wick is going to be created here, right here. And then if it breaks 30 minute highs, we'll do the sell stops. Simple as that. Because then if you break 30 minute highs, look where you're going to go. You're going to drive up now towards 939. All right. This is the resistance now. But just be careful, guys. One hour candle is still bearish. Even if you break 30 minute highs, the one hour candle will still be respecting the previous hour really high. So. We are tapping on one hour resistance though, so that's good news for flip. Yeah. That's pretty good news. Solid news. So solid resistance there, yeah. And it makes sense to the 15 closing below resistance too. Maybe this flip? <laughs> nah, you want to see the flip there, Ali. This flip isn't bad if you have a, if you have like a 15 minute closure here and then the next 15 comes down and breaks that low. That's not bad because now you're anticipating that once you break the 15 minute lows, the one hour count should flip. That's at 830. Let's see. Yeah, buys above here on bad now too. Cause now th this is a stronger and more confirmed range formed here. Yeah, it's gonna be a range two breakout now. And buyers will be a, more buyers will be above here, obviously, but this is from earlier.
You know what? That's good. Leaves in 12. It's a very, it's a, it's a yellow fall there or an orange fall there. They're expecting um, good numbers for a dollar too. So that should be a win-win for us, but who knows? News might come out however they want, however it, however it comes out. Do you have any buys idea? Yeah, it's right here. Shimmy, shimmy. I'm not ignoring you. It's just that you're asking a question that's on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> you're asking a question on you're asking if i'm looking for buys yeah I, I just explained it i'm looking for buys if you break above 935.236 this guy says don't ignore chat vote man you yeah you know come on shimmy shimmy <laughs> shimmy shimmy those eyes bro <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm deleting these cell stops yeah um i'll delete them if you break their minute highs there which looks like you might and yeah, there it is. So yeah, guys, we broke their minimizer. So there's no cells. You're gonna delete the cell stops. And what you want now though is you're probably gonna want a one-hour closure above it or a third minute count closure above this resistance for buys. <laughs> don't get me wrong. If you if you don't break the one-hour highs, then this one-hour count one-hour count at any time could just flip bearish to drive down. But with the one-hour highs breaking now, there you go. You should see a one hour starter play. Clean traffic until like 939 here. So I'm gonna wait for this candle to close and then to execute on buys in nine minutes here. Yeah. That's great though, that's good. Cause now you have more range. Like even if you miss on this range here, you have more ranges above 939.680 going up. This thing should fly up though. Should drive. Breaking structure. But that's why we have sell stops, guys, and that's why we didn't mark execute. All right? There's no guessing. It's just simply wait for this. Do that. If that doesn't happen, then no. And what are our odds that we break the highs and still flip? Very low. I mean, it's happened before like if you look left guys it ha it's happened before we had a once one time we had a third minute candle close at resistance here all right respecting this level closing below this next third minute candle came up broke the highs but then if, it's, if it if it closes now if this one hour candle closes below or third minute candle closes below 932 sell stops were are valid again because now you're going to be closing respecting this resistance Although it's a bullish candle, it's going to be respecting this resistance. So break at these lows, we'll give a one hour starter plan and you have clean traffic driving price down. It's not bad. All right, let's wait, let's wait seven minutes here. There shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any like from here to 830, there shouldn't be any positions. It's more of a gamble to take a position right now. It's like, there's no clear direction where price is going to go yet. Isn't it rejecting 1930? Um, yeah, cause you can say it's rejecting, but like if if it, I'll say like if it closes below 1932 and you break that low again, it would just probably just drive down, right? But right now, like, there's there shouldn't be any question in terms of uh, like trades. Like just because we're rejecting doesn't mean it's a buy yet, right? You need closures above here for buys, anyways. So be patient, guys. Trust me, it's like you don't want to sell down for less, man, at all. We, we, it's been like maybe two and a half hours on stream or two hours on stream. We, 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 we waited two hours. There's no need to take an impulse position right now or, you know, take a, make an impulsive decision. Why would you want to do that? If you close within this range, I will say <laughs> you're probably gonna not gonna, you're probably not gonna move to 9 a.m. So at least we can close above or below. You don't want to close within this range. This is a bad range to close in, not a good range at all. 
You want to close outside of this ranch, right? Yeah, because you close there. You're probably waiting till 9, 9.30. Yep. You close below, they're going to start a player. We're in that for sure. All right, Wix? So, uh, yeah, it'll be the same position we had before. The issue is that the one I was breaking the highs, though. Yeah, that's why I don't think it's going to happen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But I have very high chance. Look left there. Last time it happened. Look left. Last time we came down, respect this resistance. This next time I just drove on a server play. Same thing happened right here, guys. If you notice, every time looking left, we came back into the range. We just drove back inside and came down to fill the rest of the range. Yeah, you had news too, so should we bring a lot of volume in? What a coincidence. If yo, I wouldn't be surprised, guys, if this 30 minute candle here in five minutes closes below its resistance, and all of the, obviously sudden suddenly news comes in at the same given time and it gives you that 30 minute start play. Kind of go announce and the fundamentals will just line up. Wouldn't be surprised. It's happened like all year long. Uh, I mean, even if we close below 932, uh, we're still closing a bullish above in our support. I, I'll say we're closing below the resistance here. If we close below 932.225. If you close above, then yeah, you'll be in this range. You'll, you'll probably end up pushing up towards the range. But if you close below, you're respecting this resistance. And next, when our account breaks the lows, you're driving. Most likely. The forward account will then be reflipping. I have some ugly stops. Yeah, the thing is like, why are stops now though? Like, this count just came up to give us a bigger stop and that's it. It, it, it did nothing for a trade. You can't, you can't have a 75th stop though. Like, you're, you're gonna have to use current count of stops on the next 30. Minimum. If you can come up and create a steep wick like at, at 830 here, if you come up with news here and news pushes up, pushes up to create a steep wick and then you flip bearish, then salsas are valid. But if you can get a decent wick, I'm not entering. Unemployment claims in three minutes. Oh, so you, you're not trading regardless. <laughs> yeah, this stream, this stream teaches you discipline because you're on here just waiting, waiting with me, right? It's not really me being disciplined. It's more so of me waiting for my setup. I guess that's being disciplined. <laughs> yeah. It's just me understanding probability. Like, I don't want to take a lower probability trade. Well, why would you want to lose? Why would you want to put yourself in, in a situation to lose? Right? Like, why? What's the point? What's it going to do for you? It will, it will improve nothing. Your PDF changed my trend perspective. Hey, I'm glad, man. Chances this count closes below 932.250 is very high. Very high. Why are you looking for more wicks? Because Vin, we got a wick on a one hour. Yes. Right, but if you're taking a trade now based off of the breakout lows at an 8:30 candle and not a new one-hour candle, 8:30. If you gotta use current count of stops, the the stops the, 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 lo the logical stop will be uh, the one-hour highs, right? But you can't have a 70 pip stop here for a 50 pip TP. So what you want to do is you want to see the next candle create that top work for you to drive down, and you want to use the current candle highs as your stop loss. And that's why I'm looking for a top wick again. So now it comes down to the entry. Like I need a top wick for the entry. It's not so much of the structure. It's more so for the entry and to have decent stuff that make logical sense. <laughs> Bruh. Mm -mm. 
Yeah, if you can't, if you're a trainer and you can't handle like patience and discipline, then training's not for you, right? That's a test that they're there. If you can't handle taking a loss or you can't handle just being patient and disciplined and that's not your part of your plan, then training's not for you, right? You, you need to get used to these things. Yeah, one minute for news there, guys. Let's see. Unemployment claims. Minor folder. Mid folder. So if you're not trading news and you're not trading the last 15 of the four hour. <laughs> when is this trade coming? Yeah, exactly. Yo, David, yeah, there's a difference between a sub and an entry. And that's what we talked about in our playbook. Yeah, like there's a huge difference between the two. So you need a, you need two things to align to take a trade. Sub versus entry right here. Yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna place my self stops once you convert, you create a top wick. If you don't get a top wick and you just drive, then I missed the move. I'm just gonna miss the move. So I need a top wick here. I'm just gonna accept it for what it is, right? But I'm gonna need a top wick before you drive. And I'm looking for like minimum like 1932 to get tapped and then the break of like 929 with my self stops. But wait for that top wick. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Accept it for what it is. All right, there we go. Topic formed. Can we tap 1932.212 here? We're flipping here, so it has nowhere else to go but that resistance. Should be solid. Come on. Come on, gold. Is that the topic, really? Oh, so you found this topic? Yeah, I touched 1932. Did it? Uh, didn't tap that resistance yeah, it, completely. It, it, it tap, it tapped in. Hmm. I'm gonna hold out. Yeah, I know what you mean. You want a steeper wick just to be con confirmed that we're driving. It's because if 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 we weren't entering current count like current count of highs that stops, I'll be found that top wick. But since we're using, we're using the stop loss guys, the top wick, we I I want a decent top wick. I really want a decent top wick for stops. But if it was a flip, like if we enter the flip and you know we're using pure highs, that's fine. It's coming here though. You can push up again. There's um, it, it's not it's not so much on on size, Tyrone. It's more so on like structure. Like what are we tapping? It's not so much on like oh, well, it's minimum minimum. I need 15 pip wick. It has nothing to do with that because what is 15 pips anyways, right? It comes down to like what actually makes sense. And how is it affecting the analysis in general? All right, I guess it's, yeah, you just have that resistance there. So good enough. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, chat sell stops here on the break of 932 here. Stop loss is gonna be like the current kind of highs for 25 pips. You break that low, you should drive down towards this minor support down here at like 924 here. So I got sell stops placed right now, right here. Stop loss is a bit smaller than earlier though. Um, stop loss is going to be 1930, 32.117. Yep. Same trade earlier, just on a different time frame. On 30 minutes time. The stop loss becomes more aggressive now because earlier on our stop loss is based off the one hour time frame, the current one hour high. But now that the, the one hour kind of high broke the highs, this is the 30 minute stops. So you could break 30 minute highs and still respect one hour highs and still flip. That's, that's why it becomes more aggressive. But I mean, 25 pip stop, not bad at all. You got to break this low. Don't, don't jump in earlier again.
subtype is going to be um, one hour fake out um, and the and the entry type is going to be break of of lows after top wick created. That's it. It's also the, gonna be the the previous one hour low too. It's not gonna be the current one hour lows. It's for the extra extra tear on top. Did we just create a top work again? Let me yeah. see. Was that steeper? No, that wasn't steeper. That was the same top work. <laughs> This five is gonna close there. It's gonna close bearish. This next five should fill this wick in five seconds. Just a five though. Guys, if it, if, if it doesn't activate by um if it doesn't activate by four to five, we're gonna delete the sell stops. Because then at that point we wait for the four hour count to close. Um we wait for we we wait to see how this four hour count closes and then we take trades afterwards. Yeah. Same trades with women taking all your chat, nothing different. Same exact trades. It may look a little more complex today, but there was a lot, uh, it's a lot more to it today than just a regular, you know, closes out the range. It's, it's a lot more, it's, it's a steep, it's a deeper concept today. But overall, same trades we've been taking for the last two years on stream. It will be, let's see, can I get my live video here? Copy. Then, um, oh, here we go. My activate here. 9.36 or 8.36. 36 a.m. Eastern. Two. Oh, wait, this is, this is the wrong month. Oops. No, I'll just do it after. I'll just do it after. Here we go, guys. Yeah, I'm in. Got in a cell here. Stealth has got activated here. Stop loss is going to be the current kind of highs for 25 pips and TP is me down here for 56 pips here. All right. So activate in this trade. Now, the moment you come down, tap the 10 pip mark, which is around like 928.560. That's when we'll go risk free and uh, we'll move our stops to break even and take advantage of this minor support looking left there, right? Looking left minor support here. So let's see. I just wish the stop loss is the current one hour high instead of the third minute highs. Yeah. Here it goes. Volume coming in right now. <laughs> that entry is a start play entry. Do you go for us? I have. That was good. Mm. Over 20 pips. I went a bit over half. I went like, um, instead of my six, I went a little like a four. Uh -huh. Or instead of three, I went four. A little over half risk. Because um, it was like, a, it was in, it was, it was yeah, in between, between like 25, saying, yeah. 30. So. Should be bad though. Once you once you rebreak this low, guys, it should be clean. Like you should see a quick push. Just be aware. Once you rebreak this low, it should be a quick push towards like this break even point. And just understand that looking left, there's a minor support here. So just you, I'm gonna make a decision here. Um, in terms of managing risk, just put it out there for you guys, just, just in case it does drive quick and you guys can't um do it quick enough. You know.
imagine risk in a losing situation though if we were to close bullish or if you close respecting the support at 9 a.m then i'm just gonna close or close half right and depending on how the four account closes we'll be uh in again at 9 30 or 9 15 ish but this four account should flip here once you rebreak the lows at 9 29 it should be clean towards the bomb bomb the four range here there it goes there it is volume Can we get 10 pips? Word. <laughs> there it is, guys. Nice. Gonna close. Move my stops to break even. Gonna close half of my positions right here at the at the got, 10 pip mark. I got six pips. I got I got 10 on my broker. I got straight 10. I'm um, gonna close half, guys. I, I said I told you guys act quick because there's a minor support here, right? So this is why I'm moving my stops to break even, closing half. We're tapping that level and gonna let the rest run until TP now. All right, so risk free trade. We did we did our part. Yeah, now it's go. just the rest. Yeah, it should be good. I uh, don't want to go break even. I know, but it's like it's like another thing as well is um it's 9 a.m. right? It's gonna be 9 a.m. soon too, so I wouldn't be surprised if we end up hitting break even and we just end up ranging here until like 9:50, 9:32. So another reason for me to go break even. Or we might just drive, guys. Look, four accounts flipping bearish now. This is what we're talking about all morning. We're gonna flip bearish, and the support is down at nine twenty five point two one three here. So, solid. Good position, strap. A runner. Um, yeah, I got runners now. I, got, I closed half. Got runners there. Nice. She's a runner. She's a track star. Nice positions, chat. Nice positions. Good stuff. Good stuff, chat. Good stuff. If you guys can close parts if you guys want again, up to you. Whatever you guys you manage risk wise, it's up to you guys. You know, like this is how we manage risk, but you can do whatever you want in terms of managing uh, risk. Whatever you want. Shit. What happened? I wanted to close another half, but it came back up. I, I know those ones. Yeah, it's 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 gonna struggle here a bit, like right here in this range here. And this is this is this this could just be the rejection for the 9 a.m. candle. Cause this this has to create a bottom wick on a four hour candle, right? And if the four candle closes bearish in about twelve minutes here, respecting this resistance, the next four account is probably gonna drive down to fill the bottom of the range. It's gonna come all the way down towards like this four hour support here. So makes sense. Let's see, guys. Let's hopefully we want we want runners to hit TP though, obviously. Yeah, I, I just closed another half. Yeah. Can we get a TP? Sorry, I I closed seventy five percent of my position. Yo, Chad, this this analysis was on point. Like, the trade was cool and whatnot, but the analysis, just dissecting the four hour candle bit by bit, and you know, like getting a piece of the puzzle from the one hour, from the thirty, from the fifteen, closing below that resistance, respecting that level. Like everything, in this trade coming down to our entry and patient and waiting for the top wick. It was just. On it point. Come down here after that big ass wick in this range, like it should come down. I don't get it. This is... It should have just. It should have drove down. This support is not strong enough for the orders that we just collected in this range. Breaking back into range and the 8 a.m. volume. Well, you know what's cool here though? Remember we said the 8 a.m. candle will give us volume and direction. Mm -hmm. Look what it just did. It just broke up, came all the way down, gave us direction went followed the previous candle that uh, faked out and this is the this is the volume that's driving it we literally broke all this down i want to close oh ted's here <laughs> hey ted's here perfect timing hey what's going on ted good morning. grab some how's it going good morning good morning yeah it was pretty easy um <laughs> i love hey. it <laughs> Well, I mean, the idea was, I mean, you guys called it play by play. I, I, I saw the same thing. I just was a little bit more aggressive with the hourly candle because there was two factors here. Um, news coming in at 830, which was going to be positive. So as soon as I saw the 8 a.m. candle drive up, uh, I was sort of looking at the fact that uh, we would probably start to drive down towards uh, 820, 825. So I was in there, um, but I did catch cells before the 8 a.m. Uh, open. 
through 745 and uh, to basically 755, which was mm. pretty straightforward too. But if you recognize the story from 8 a.m. when it drove up like that, you would have realized that at 820, as it started to pull back, the news was going to be positive and exactly what you guys said was going to happen, happened. I mean, it was, it was pretty straightforward. Um, it's just you had to use the idea of the news being positive and why we were driving up. Up, right because think about it it goes back to the same thing when when we were driving down at 7 45 um i knew that at eight o'clock we would drive back up because of the fact that it made no sense that if the news is going to be positive at 8 30 that institutions would want to take orders at seven at like 19 30 they would want them at a higher higher point um my only challenge now is and the reason why i closed everything was if you look on the hourly to the left we're in that zone and more importantly it's a massive zone something that we talked about yesterday we had the same issue yesterday going through that zone and bouncing around and then we eventually bounced up uh it's you're, you're entering the same area again so uh, you guys sort of said that already effectively um what you'll have to do is you'll have to wait for the next wick to come up again probably for the next hour and then drive down so today's one of those days where if you're taking trades and you've gotten your 10 or 15 pips or whatever you tried to get and you achieved it it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get entries and exits again, just because you can see the last three hour candles, you know, your stop, like, like Don said, it's going to have to be like at almost 1938. Right. And then you think to yourself, it's like, do we really think, you know, gold is going to drive down to like 1918. Right. So it's, it's very tough to take those positions. And the reason why I say that too, is, you know, you're looking obviously for the daily candle to drive bearish. Um, but then there's a conflict and the conflict comes to the fact that tomorrow's NFP. So here's the situation. If NFP is going to be positive tomorrow for the U S dollar, why are we driving down today? So there, there's there's like multiple conflicts in my mind that, okay, we had ADP that was somewhat positive yesterday, uh, NFP if it's positive, and then you say to yourself, okay, well, if gold is driving down today, that means NFP potentially could be negative tomorrow and it would drive back up or tensions in Ukraine and Russia would start up again because right now that's sort of slowing down. They're going to be talking again and they want to sort of come to the table for a ceasefire. Kind of plateaued. Um, so yeah, seeing that in the market. Yeah, and, and we talked about that yesterday is for the market to drive to reach newer highs with gold, there has to be a, a bigger escalation of events. Because basically what's happened is um, the current event with the Ukraine and Russia, the markets absorb that impact. They're like, hey, whatever, it's the same thing every day. There's some some shooting going on, some people are dying, but there's no real like disaster, right? It, from a humanitarian level, there's a massive problem, right? We all agree with that, but from you have to look at it from an economic market level. We've already seen the worst, right? It's like, you, you, if, if you were an insurance adjuster and you saw a car accident, right? people got hurt, but it's a car accident. Like there's nothing going to happen after that accident. It's already happened, right? You can say, oh, you know, now I got to do physio. I got to do rehab. The insurance adjuster is just looking and being like, okay, the guy needs a new fender. He needs a new tail lamp or whatever, you know, to fix the car. Like, it's not going to be like, well, now three years later, you know, you're going to have chronic back pain. Like it, the insurance adjuster is just looking at the action. The action was finished. Now we have to solve it. Right. And it's sort of the same thing when the market works that way. They, it does the same thing. Okay. There was that initial shock when Russia started the invasion. We know the invasion's ongoing. It hasn't escalated to the fact that, okay, now NATO is getting involved or there's more troops being sent or, you know, we are hearing of massive destruction or bombs have taken off or talks of nuclear war is starting, right? So that's sort of the thing, right? So if you're able to, in the market, separate the emotional side or humanitarian side to the actual event, you'll realize that, you know, things have calmed down from an economic standpoint. Um, you know, if there's more discussion with the US, obviously that'll create tension, um, you know, things of that nature. But they pretty much everybody did everything they could right now to Russia to sort of slow them down. And that's basically it. Right. It's, so it's like similar to COVID, like when COVID first came, like it right. hit the markets pretty steep. Right. And then as yeah. time went by, like it's not, it's not, the it's not like moving off of the fact that we're getting more cases on a daily. Right. 
Right. Exactly. Like, yeah, if there's more cases in COVID. It's like, who cares? Like yeah. we've already, we already know that that's going to happen. Like that's where analysts get paid, you know, whatever their pay rate is to do things like that and, and financial modeling. It's like for us to react more, there has to be a surge or there has to be X factor in the market. It's the same thing that's happened here is all the analysis is done by institutions. And they're like, Hey, if we don't pass, pass this current threshold right now, then we're okay. Then, you know, this is sort of the, the, the point here. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see how NFP plays out tomorrow. Um, truthfully, it, I think it'll be a little choppy if it, if it does yeah. drop down. Um, the real play for gold coming up will be interest. Excuse me, interest rates. That'll be the big play because if they do raise interest rates, gold's going to drop heavy um, because we're at a very very high level now. And I mean, I don't know if it was to be expected, but obviously it seems like 1970 was sort of the grab for liquidity for now the move to go down. Mm -hmm. um, but it, once again, it's like we didn't we didn't expect to go up to um, 1970, right? So this war sort of created, I think, a, a perfect scenario for interest rates for gold because then now you're looking at going back into potentially the 1800s, um, you know, 1890s, 1880s, uh, with interest rates coming up. Uh, if, if that's the case, uh, then the second too. argument, yeah, the second argument then becomes okay if that's if that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, is the market anticipating this and have they priced it in already? And I don't think the market's priced it in already. We'll have to see how the market reacts the week the interest rate release is going to happen, like FOMC data comes out and then absorb, uh, uh, you know, uh, observe, uh, observe there and see exactly what happens. But for the most part, it's today is going to be choppy. Yesterday was pretty choppy. Um, and I think tomorrow will set up the rest of the structure for the following week. So I think after next week, after tomorrow, we'll have a better structure for February. Um, March. Yeah. Or sorry, <laughs> March. Yeah. We're in March. Yeah. Um, no, but better structure that way. I just still think that our challenge right now is looking at, you know, the, even if you look at the daily, you have that huge zone between uh, 1973 and 1909. And we're in that zone right now. So oh, you got it up. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I'll just do this pretty quick. Um, your challenge here is this, right? You're, you're in this area here. So everything in this section here um, is really crazy, right? Because, you know, when we talk about taking trades out of a zone, right, you'd want to take a trade out of the zone drop here or a zone to, you know, to drive up here. The The issue now is you're, you're effectively in this area here because this wick has created the conflict right and and it's created the challenge so you can say to yourself okay um ted once we break out of this you know below this zone over here yeah we're going to drop down you know maybe into this area over here back into this area over here but how many times have you seen a candle sort of drop out of the zone and then go back in right so all you have to do is think about it from a, a smaller time frame standpoint how many times have you seen your your candle go into into a zone and you know it, it, it we basically will dip down and then all of a sudden we're back into the zone right and then you've basically gotten faked out here and this becomes the low to then drive further up right um truthfully the daily candles i i don't trust this daily candle if it does drop it's going to be hard to break this area because once again you have a conflict here um you have this zone here which is basically this zone here so you have base you have essentially your 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 um i guess you could say a rejection here and then a rejection here so then you say to yourself well which way are we going we don't know um now if you look at overall trend overall trend is this so you would say oh well you know ted then essentially what we'll do is we'll tap into this area here and then we'll continue moving up but then how does that work fundamentally that's the challenge right so mm -hmm. fundamentally we're saying okay well if, if nfp is good that's going to drive us down and then if fomc is good that's going to drive us down more then the question becomes okay what do the institutions think well the the institutions once again they're going to turn around and say well how good is nfp going to be for us to drive down if nfp is not that great 
we're still going to drive up. Um, if the if we drive down all this week, as an example, if we know that a hundred percent or the you know a high probability they're going to raise interest rates in the United States, this drive down is just going to just drive us back up afterwards because all the actual drive down is priced in because it's so obvious that we're going to raise rates. Um, the challenge or the the precursor for the rate increase will be when uh, Powell says how many times he's going to look at raising rates, right? So if, if they have a definite number in his press conference, that will be the market driver. It's not going to necessarily be the rate increase that's going to be the market driver. It's going to be how he presents the rate increases. Is he going to say, okay, we're going to do four rate increases this year? Or, okay, now we've confirmed over the next two years, we're doing eight increases. And that's going to be your heavy move. So you might find this FOMC is going to be pretty wild because that's that's setting the tone for the next year, uh, next year year and a half so to speak so just be very aware um, we're in a very s weird spot with gold um, there's a you know you have obviously political events and economic events all coming in together and you have to be able to decipher all that um, it's just going to be a mess to be honest perfect yeah yeah it's gonna be interesting tomorrow of nfp um what are you expecting tomorrow numbers come home See that flip. Now nah, they're expecting. They're expecting bad numbers tomorrow. Pretty interesting. Yeah, that flip. Yeah, guys. Um, that update on a trade. Um, I hate break even. So if those are are still in, do you? I break even. I'm happy with my fifty percent. Um, fifty percent at ten pips. That's it. Thought to it. Hey Ted, what, what was your entry, Ted? You said like ADM. It was 32 or something? 30, 33-ish? Oh shoot. I have a slide, I'm kind of mute. All right. Yeah, so I had um, my initial uh, entries for the cells. I, I took cells at, um, at 730, 735. Yeah. Okay. At 1932, and then I closed at 1930. Oh, over here. Okay, so it was before this whole initial push. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. And then um, I had sells again. Right now, at um, where are we here? At at 1934, and I had those at um, after the eight after the 820 push up. Mm -hmm. Um, because remember how we have that comics thing that comes in at eight, eight, eight o'clock or eight twenty. So that eight twenty move was the push up the final driver to grab the best price. So I was in at, um, 1934 and, uh, let's see here. 1933, yeah, 1933-39, 1933-49, 1933-55, 1934-10, and 1934-63. And that was all at 820. So 820, 821, and 822. And then I was cl I closed at uh, basically 8... Uh, I had a couple closers at 830, and then I had mm -hmm. one at 840. Um, those were the two closes I had. Solid. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's just tough because the um the the way the the market was set up, I was really worried about this wick that we came into in the hour, so I was just trying to avoid um getting it getting there, but uh, one thing I've noticed a lot, uh, and this is something that I've picked up on that I took advantage of, and, and you were right too, you took advantage of this as well, is um, with gold especially, these kind of candles here. Th these kind of candles here. Yeah. Sometimes you get a bit of a push up first and then a drive down, and that push up obviously can be anywhere in this zone right so you could you, it's pretty scary to be honest but it's something similar to what you saw right here so if you were smart and you observed um essentially where is it um you observed this candle right here 
you saw the same thing happen here, same thing happened here, same thing happened here. Yeah. So if you if you saw that and you recognize that, the 830 sell was very easy. But these are the details that people miss. And those are the details that I saw right away. And I was like, well, it's gonna it's gonna drive down a little bit further. My only hesitation, like I said, was that wick on the hourly because we're entering that zone, but now it seems like we're just driving right through it. So, you know, once again, your analysis was on point. Um, it was just a little choppy uh, through the first uh, 10 minutes of the half hour that opened. And that was just because of the news impact. Um, but it, it was very, very on point and I agreed with it a hundred percent. It was just like these little nuances that, that I see in the markets. It's like you, you can, you could, if you base the, if you built this out effectively um, for your zone, you could say, okay, this entire range here is your zone, right? And then you could say to yourself, okay, for, for argument's sake, this is, this is your zone here. And then this is the final zone right over here. So you have those two areas, but what, what you'll see is this candle somewhat left that zone after that. And that was the final drop to go, you know, and come right over here to try and tap that zone. So you'll see like 9 a.m. It'll pull up a bit. And then I think you're going to find that you're going to drive into that zone afterwards. So like you said, waiting for a wick over here, probably 930, you'll get that. Or what will happen is um, the way the candles will set up now is this well, let me just delete these things here. This 9, 9 a.m. candle right here may finish like this. It may finish like that. Um, so the 9 a.m. this is a 9 a.m. candle may finish. And then your 10 a.m. candle will create the wick up. And then that will be the one that finishes and drives into that. Yeah. So just just be aware of that because a lot of times the 9 a.m. candle is pretty choppy because essentially what happens is you have the 9 a.m. New York session. And if you look at the current market data uh, for, you know, sort of the market open, it's almost at like break even. Um, like there's really no move positive or negative. So it's like a sort of like, it's just going to open flat. So that means that there's a lot of indecision still in the market, because normally what you're always looking for is you want really like really, really good opens or really, really bad opens with future market data, right? Cause you want to, you want to see where the money's going to be moving throughout the day. And that'll sort of judge where gold's going to go. Um, but at this point, the market's pretty flat. So you might find that it, it might just play around there at nine 30 and pull back a bit. And then 10 o'clock you get your better move. Um, if you're looking for a quick hit, um, these are trades that, um, I've taken previously, and you guys talk about it too, is wait for this upper wick to form. And then basically you can do a quick, uh, wow, wick fill. you can do a wick fill right over here once this hourly candle flips. And then what you're doing is you're watching your five minutes, uh, 15, and then possibly your 30. You're watching all three of those time frames, and you're saying, okay, once it sort of does the McDonald's arch to drive down, then this wick flips. Um, and then you have that drive all the way through. Cause that's essentially what it is. It's the McDonald's arch, right? Yeah. So if you look here, you have this dip down and up and then dip down again. Right. So you get that McDonald's arch. I look for those all the time too. So it's like, once you come up to the sort of the high here, you know that we're going to start to drive down then it's going to bounce back up and then it's going to drive down again. So it's the same thing that's happening here. Right. So this is the beginning. We're going to drive back up. Actually, let me clear this. Um, essentially, so you have the this was your initial drive down. You're going to have the McDonald's arch up and then continue to drive down, right? You, you can just see how the market played itself at that point. And, that, and, that, and that's, uh, that's just a visual cue for yourself. Um, if you're if you're looking for visual cues, um, that, that's essentially what you're doing. We're not breaking this high. If we don't break this high, like you said, originally, we are continuing to drop. It's just what happens with gold is it gets choppy because like, look at this wick here, like you're, you're up like, it was almost like what, 60 pips, 70, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, how do you place a stop? People yeah. are like, well, how do you do it? Yeah. You can't. You can't. You have to drop into like a five minute time frame and see the rejection on the five minute and be like, okay, I hope my stop holds. And it, and for the most part, it should because now, like you guys were saying uh, during the commentary, is like you've got the momentum now to swing down. So you have to trust that gold's going to push that direction now. Yep. 
like the one hour stops earlier like before like we had that drive up at eight before we broke the highs there it was it was i think it was like maybe like four pips there and then we just rebroke the highs and then we ended up closing bearish lowest range here so we had to use the current 30 instead yeah 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 there's a wick fell <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, so those are quick hits. So when I used to build my account, I used to take, um, I used to take those kind of trades, and just fill the wick because I knew that we would flip, and I could probably grab like you know whatever it was, like ten pips or eight pips or whatever it was. It was just a quick hit because you knew that momentum would start again, right? And and this is sort of how you read candles: is you would say to yourself, okay, the last usual, the la the first say the first 25 or 30 percent of a candle is always going to be the opposite direction for the most part like if you go and you do you, you do these stats on how candles are formed right so you look at a candle this is like very very basic you know elementary work for a trader is like you say to yourself well how did that candle form on the one hour so a one hour candle is formed by four 15 minute candles or you know basically what is it um I guess uh 30 35 minute candles is that right or there. am i right there. yeah there. no 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 i'm not right it's uh i don't even know my math this morning it's like 12 five minute candles i apologize um so what you're doing is you're breaking up uh those those ideas and you're saying to yourself okay you're saying okay out of four 15 minute candles what happened in the last hour Right. So in the last hour, you say to yourself, OK, the first 15 minutes we drove up to create the upper wick of that candle. Then the second 15 minutes, we, you know, sort of stalled and started to drop. It was really in the third 15 minute candle of the hour. So between like half past and quarter two, the new hour, that's where we had the major drive. The last 15 minute candle sort of finished that off. And then there was a pullback right so now what you do is you sort of do the same thing again and you sort of say to yourself okay if i know that's the case this is how the next hour candle should form it'll be we're gonna have a pull up and then we're gonna drive you know we're gonna do that whole drive again and then the last 15 minutes i have to be aware but now as you continue that process you start to get a little sneaky because what you say to yourself is this, you say to yourself, okay, I know that the last 15 minutes of the candle could potentially drive up or reverse to create a wick at the bottom so that I know that's going to get filled. But I also know the new hour candle, there is sometimes like a spillover of momentum, right? So I can pick that apart and I can say, okay, in the first five minutes, there's going to be a quick dip down because it's just going to fill that little wick for the for a second and then it's going to start to drive back up again to create the new wick so you can you can sort of play around a little bit especially with high volatile pairs because you can see those small little nuances where um sometimes the last five minutes of a 15 minute candle isn't pulling back but it just drives further down right so what you can do is you know that if the last 15 minute candle drives hard with gold as an example and the last five minutes of that hour candle is driving deep with gold you have to exit right at like the 59th minute of that hour because what happens is at the 60th minute when the new hour forms that pulls all the way back hard it's like a slingshot because if you look at gold gold moves like a slingshot so if it has a deep drive down the next major candle will drive all the way up it's very rare that you have one candle that dips hard and then the next hour right away the next candle dips really hard as well so if you recognize recognize those nuances this is how you can play the market because you can say to yourself okay from from a non over trading standpoint is i understand that we're going to dip hard right now at 8 30 say from 8 30 to 9 a.m we're going to get a nice big dip down but i know at 8 59 i need to exit my position right away because i know at 9 a.m it's going to drive all the way back up and then at 9 30 we're going to drive all the way back down to my original take profit that was there at 8 59 mm -hmm. so now i can double dip that entry because essentially what's happening in the market is the institutions have said okay well you know our first initial play was the North American Open, and now we're going into the uh, the New York Stock Exchange Open. So we want to get those same entries again, 
And that's what essentially happens every day. And you'll be able to continue to do that every single day. As you see more of those ideas pop up, you can start to take advantage. And you're almost, it's almost like you're playing the market like you, you, you're making music in the market because you're able to play every single note that the market is giving you because it's like, okay, I know at 8 a.m. we're going to get a drive. I know at 8.30 we're going to get a pullback. I know at 9 a.m. we're going to set up for 9.30. I know 9.30 could be a little choppy and I know 10 a.m. will take care of whatever happened at 9.30. Like I can already picture all those and then you can build your whole entire trading plan around that idea and then it's just a matter of managing your risk and understanding where your zones are and it's very 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 straightforward so that you're able to do that every single day and it's just taking different pieces of those ideas 8 a.m you know you can even say 7 30 8 a.m mm -hmm. 8 30 9 30 and then 10. those are the key times eastern times that you can look and you can take advantage of the market like art they're just like art same thing every day yeah yeah but the thing is though people don't want to take that time to study it right they they just want to just take bits and pieces of the market but that's those little nuances like i read some of the chat and i just laugh because people are like oh you know like he's just talking too much or you know he's rambling all about stuff but this is the level of detail the granular information that you need to be successful in the markets because the markets work on algorithms they work on computers so if you understand that computers are running the markets and they're going to stop at certain points they're going to change direction at certain times um you know different uh time periods you know whether it's 15 minute end of the hour end of a four hour if you know those things and you know those close times whether it's market opens market closings if you understand that and you could put that together you can anticipate the the market moves and it's not anticipating so that you can enter it's more anticipating so that you can manage your positions like if i know right now as an example like we just watched gold rip up yeah if you knew that you took a trade at 8 30 you knew to get out just before the end of the hour because now what's happened your 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 trade has gone all the way back up to break even you you get so angry for that but if you know that as a trader you're happy because you're like I exited at the right time because I knew there was going to be a pullback. Those are like, a, that's a minor detail that nobody would tell you. Nobody would say, hey, there's going to be a, uh, there's going to be a pullback right at nine o'clock. But what do most people say? Oh, we're just going to continue on the TP2. Uh, this is just a pullback. Yeah. So I, I look at it and say, well, why do I have to be involved in this pullback? If I know that 80% of the time there's going to be a pullback at 9 a.m., why don't I exit my position and then wait for this candle to form again for the same direction I was looking to previously, and now I can double dip? Or I'm out of the market and I profited the most I could get out of that particular move. Like This is going to separate you from being a break-even trader to you being a profitable trader because you see these small little details like people ask me they're like well how's your win rate so high it's because i know these things i know that happens the majority of time at nine o'clock i know this happens the majority of time at nine o'clock and the times that it doesn't I don't get burned either. That's the difference. Like people will say, oh, well, look, you only got 10 pips. It moved another 60, but, but that's fine yeah. because I'm okay with the decision I made because there's been times like we see right now that 10 pips would have just been all you would have gotten, yep. right? 20 pips, whatever it would have been. So in the long-term scheme of things, I'm consistently hitting singles, but I'm not taking losses. I'm not having break even trades really. I'm taking my 10, 15, 20 pips and I'm done. I come back tomorrow, I do the same thing where people are sitting here going, oh, I want like 50 pips. Now it's gone back to break even. So you basically had a null day today. You, you had a, you, it was a no trade today, day today. You took trades, you didn't profit where the smart trader would have taken trades, would have profited and been like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. 
but and keep doing that over and over again and you'll start to see every day wow a win a win a win a win a win not oh i broke even again oh man why did it reverse on me oh i was in profits and i just lost them like that Should ruins your, yeah it ruins your psychology right yeah it's like you can ask any trader they sit there and they they're you're, you're 25 pips in profit and then it reverses back to break even and you get stopped out you feel stupid because you're like, wow, that was money on the table that just got lost, you know? And, and then what happens is you, and you, you mentally, you get frustrated because the next day now, what do you do? You close too early, right? Because you have that, that feeling in the back of your head of, oh man, I don't want to get to break even again. So I'm going to take seven pips. I'm going to take five pips. And then, you know, it's because your hand has been burned so many times by the market because you're not taking what the market's giving you. You're trying to define what you think the market should give you. And instead let the market define that for you. If the market says you're getting 10 pips, you take your 10 pips. If the market says you're getting 30 pips today, you take your 30 pips. That's the way that you should be fluid in the market. It's not, well, I have to take 50 pips because I have a 30 pip stop and I, I need a 60 pip reward. It's like, maybe that's not going to work out. Maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe it's going to be a five pip stop with a 10 pip reward. You know, that's what it'll be. And if people do that more often, you're going to have confidence because you're not going to have that lingering feeling in the back of your mind when you come to the charts. Like I don't come to the charts going, oh man, I'm going to get break even today. I come to the charts going, hmm, maybe I'll get 20 pips today. Maybe I'll get 30. Today I got 20 pips. Cool. Awesome. Next day, start again. Next day. Yeah. It's, and the thing is like, um, whatever traders, like they, they have that, that like they say, oh, um, I only got 10 pips today. I wanted more. It's like, they're always going to be running in circles. And it's never like a, it's never, um, sustain, like it's never, it's never like sustainable. It's like every day it's, it's something new. It's like every day it's like, oh, I should have closed half or I should have held my, my position longer. And it's, you know, it's all, it's, it's going to keep them running in circles every day. Yeah. And it, yeah. and it's just, um, it, it's just one of those things. It's because you get, everybody teaches the same thing. And this is the problem. Everybody teaches the, the same concepts, but how many people are actually experiencing those concepts every day in the market, right? I, I mean, it, it sucks because sometimes I'll go on YouTube and I'll watch all these like videos and <laughs> it's, it's bad because they're not teaching anything. Like the, the, oh, this is the video. Okay. So there's some, there's some, you know, trap music in the beginning. So there's some, some beats <laughs> in the beginning. Um, the, you know, there's a, there's some like artwork or some fancy picture of some, some material thing. And then it's like, Hey guys, what's good. Uh, like, and subscribe to my page. If you want to hear some more of this, that's the first thing they say, which is stupid. I, if anybody told me to like, and subscribe, as soon as I opened the video, I'd be like, I, I would, uh, I would not do it because of principle it should be at the end hey if you enjoyed this content i appreciate you know the support it wouldn't be yeah like and subscribe because you want to be higher on the youtube algorithm that's the cheesiest selling point and it and it turns me off personally right away i don't need to i don't need to be told to like and subscribe to something i'll choose to do that i know how to use youtube as a person going on YouTube, they pretty much know how to do that if they want to choose that. And I look at that as just a cheesy sales tactic. So right away, I'm turned off. Then it's, oh, you know, today's my day. I got to go, you know, I got to either go look at my, I got to go to the car dealership. I got to go to the watch my store. Clarin. I got to go, you know, over to the Louis Vuitton store. I got to go somewhere. So that's their day. And then it's like, okay, now I want to break down a trade that I did like a week ago. <laughs> and then they pull up this, you know, trading view screen and, and it's like, okay, you know, like I took a trade here, I did this. And it's like, if you took the trade two weeks ago, open up your meta quotes terminal, just pop up the trade. You could see the exact entry and exact exit. No, but you know, this is what it was. And then, you know, here's, here's the money. And you know, that, that's what I got to do. And it's like, there, there was, there was no real information given. It was, 
oh yeah, well, this was the high. It didn't break the high, so I took it and I knew we were going to go hit TP1. It's like there was no fundamental information. There was no rationale on why you took the trade. It was, oh, we just didn't break the high or we didn't break the low. It's like, how is that educational? How is that beneficial? Like, why don't you tell a story about why this trade started why you were looking for this trade and what was the purpose and what was the rationale behind what you were trying to do it's not that it's just more of like hey you know if i can get 5000 views yeah maybe i get like you know i get a a picture or you know i get a little plaque um and i'll i'll get like $5 put into my youtube account um so it's just I mean, it, I'm not talking about anyone specific because you can go on, you can go on and just look up day trading and they all start the same way. Don could do it. He could pull up a YouTube right now and, and, and just type in day trading and it's the exact same pictures. Um, there's usually a picture of the guy's face. There's some big caption along the bottom, which is clickbait. And there's some like magical random colors. <laughs> Rare. <laughs> look. Face, 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 face. Simple, best strategy, five tips, best strategy, five tips, stocks, face. Here's a face, 88% winning rate. Scalping, face, day trading, face, face, face. Oh, here's a female. Here's another female, face. It's, it, it like, look at this. This is, it's garbage. It's absolute garbage. So who saturated. Would it, like, who, who would, who would even want to look at any of that? It's all the same. Maybe like, I think of all the videos I've seen on YouTube, maybe like 10% of the videos I've seen like actually give, actually have value and actually give some type of good information. The rest of the is just the same. It's just the same. Like, is that what you said? Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's, it's just sad because you know what, as, as a group of individuals learning how to trade, like I've always said this from day one is we as a collective should be trying to elevate ourselves together versus the institutions as retail traders we should learn how to get better and beat the institutions but it's not it's just everyone's trying to sell something and it's stupid but eh, it's good for a laugh 10 minutes for nysc see what happens Yes, Don, you waiting? You look. You looking for uh, more positions today? Just, Me? Just <laughs> um. Yeah, rangy. I, I yeah, like going about Ted said earlier. Like I think I think nine thirty here. So we're gonna close bull here, and then I think what's gonna happen the next thirty minute candle is the next thirty minute candle will be the sign of factor if I'm gonna take a trade or not. Because if he close bearish, average this is at like nine thirty to ten, then ten minute candle should drop down. But if he close like bullish or within like these ranges here, depending on how we close, there might not be a trade for me. Comes down to the alley candle, I think. Yeah. This alley candle is key here. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Are you done for a day, Ted? Oh, yeah. You'll find that probably 930 will be a little choppy. Um, but I think if you look at the hourly, so go back into the hourly and you focus on that range in the hourly, if we might have an opportunity to double dip this this whole move again. Um, similar to what Wix was saying is if you mark out your zone and use this as your entire zone here, let this 930 candle simmer, um, this one here, or the nine o'clock candle, let it simmer, let it drive up over here and potentially let the 10 o'clock candle wick up into this zone one more time and then continue to drive down. So your nine o'clock candle may pull you back into that zone and then wait for the 10 o'clock candle to drive out of that zone. Um, the reason why I say that is also there is um, news at 10 a.m. as well. And that's the reason why we're starting to push up right now. So every time Powell, and this is another thing, if you notice, every time Powell's come in and speak, and spoke in the last week he's driven the market down so now think about this why is the market reacting and driving up okay well 10 o'clock chances are the market's going to drive down so now you have a play 
now you have an idea and you say to yourself, okay, I know that Powell has come in and spoken anytime. Like if you look at the calendars, anytime Powell's come in to speak, he's made some positive notions towards the US. So what are institutions doing right now? Institutions are driving the price back up into that zone to then drive further down. So now what you can say to yourself is, if we get to the top of the zone, say at like 1938, I can put sell stops at 1936. And if we do get positive information from Powell and also ISM, the results are positive. I know that we're going to tap probably 1938, 1939. But when we start to reject, we'll reject from that area. And then 1936, all the way down back into like 1928, you, or, or even 20, sorry, 23, you have a huge move at that point, right? Because all you've done is you've planned that out accordingly. So this would be, this would be your play right now for the 10 o'clock hour is watching how the market reacts to Powell's discussion and also the IM, ISM results. You have a huge move opportunity because this will last more of the, more than likely the rest of the day. Which part? The the ISM results. The well, the this the, the ISM the actual absorption absorption yeah. of news. Yeah, the absorption of news at ten o'clock. That will be the play for the rest of the day now. So this nine a.m. candle is going to fake everybody out and drive back up here. And then what will happen is people that aren't on this stream are going to take buys. Right? <laughs> they're going to take they're going to take buys at nine thirty. You know, it's just the pullback, right? right? It's just a pullback and then ISM and Powell is going to come in and it's going to drive past Gosh. the lows of the last, the last, uh, the last hour. Another thing is like the four count as well, like the high, of the first four is like all the way up at like 1940, right? So mm -hmm. this thing can literally drive up to 1936, 38 and not break 40 and just flip bearish and, some and, still, be le and still be legit. That's right. Still be bearish. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I really think that four hour give, was a huge giveaway today. Mm -hmm. I think TD is TD's a bit different though today. I think it was. You, you know, you, people I think know all these concepts. It's like like we say, it's applying them that's the hard part. But for some reason, when it comes to the charts, people go blank. They start drawing blanks, and it's like, hey, we've been over this concept. We've been over this. Why like, <laughs> why why are you you know repeating the same mistakes if we keep going over the same concepts? And people. Is, I don't know what the hard part is in applying the concepts you're learning, but people just revert to their old selves and just forget everything they know for some reason or forget everything that, <laughs> that they've learned. I don't know what, what it is, ego, greed, or just, I don't know, an experience. But for some reason, they you, you, I could bang a concept into somebody's head day in, day out, day in, day out, and then... <laughs> on the charts it's like hey didn't we go over this why are you doing this yeah so yeah it, I, I, I don't i don't know why why people tend to draw blanks when when they're all of a sudden forced to to be responsible for themselves and make the decision and make the decision that you were taught to make instead of just you know, you know what it is though to be honest it's the fact that um you you're in an environment where you believe um you're not good enough to be in so it, it's a weird concept but this is a psychological concept right so everybody looks at politicians or doctors as somebody that is more like like something i could never do that's, that's right I could. It's, it's a hierarchy thing right so you come to the markets and you already have self-dealt in your head because think about it this way a lot of people that are learning how to trade right now they're they're trying to escape something right you're trying to escape you know your job you're trying to escape your you know your debts you're trying to escape you know not having to work nine to five you're trying you're trying to escape something so now what ends up happening is you come into a market where you're you you're taught how to do something and it's pretty straightforward but your mind can't wrap wrap your head around the fact that this is all it is this is all i have to do like you know it's a complex subject when but when you like you said but when you break it down there's certain things that you can take advantage of that will make you profitable more times than not Right. But people don't want to accept that because it can't be they, this easy. They, it, they're like, it can't be this easy because I don't deserve 
to have this, right? So the mental aspect and the psychological psychological aspect of trading is very tough on you because there is a point where you feel as though you're not good enough to do this. Or it's the opposite. You feel as though you're better than this. Like, oh, I should be getting, you know, 90 pip trades, 80 pip trades. Like, I know how to do this. This is easy. So there's either an overconfidence or there's a lack of confidence in yourself. And both of those elements burn you from a psychological standpoint. Because if you lack confidence, what happens? Oh, I close my trade too early. Avoid trades. Avoid trades. I'm not taking trades. Right. And then now when you have overconfidence, what do you do? You overtrade, over leverage, blow your account, you're screwed. And I think so, those depend on your personality and right. having no experience. Yeah. So, and also too how you grew up, right? If you were grew, yeah. if you grew up in a home where you were fostered to build ideas, you were, you know, loved as a child, so to speak, you feel as though, you know, like there's a possibility to do this. But the thing is mentally. This is a psychological aspect that nobody teaches people in trading, and I've done this before, is you have to break out of the mindset that you're not any different than the best person on the face of this earth, right? Like you have to, you have to understand that anything that you're going to do is going to be requiring you to do work and it's going to be very difficult, but it doesn't, but there's nowhere in the world that says that you can't do this you're going to stop yourself from doing this because you're either going to over leverage you're going to over trade you're going to under capitalize yourself and you're going to over risk that's where you're going to stop yourself you're not going to stop yourself if you're conservative with your trades if you're managing your risk because you're going to have a positive experience and then what happens is psychologically as well we are told as children as adults condition that's right there's only you can you should only be making a certain amount of money right so you see you see lebron james make 130 million dollars a year and you see and you say to him well of course he makes that money because he's good at what he does he is a professional right now you hear somebody in the fx market going well i just made fifteen thousand dollars today that's crazy you can't do that that's impossible you you have to be lying about that there's there's because it's not on tv there isn't somebody on tv reporting to us every day that hey the top fx traders today made three million dollars each or whatever the number would be so there's a roadblock there because your parents probably don't make this kind of money your friends don't make this kind of money everybody you around relate. you you can't relate so now you're entering a weird you're entering a place of fear and I entered that place too because that's the, one of the reasons I traded while I was working because I needed to be grounded. When I started trading and I was trading, I traded, I worked full time while I was trading and I was still earning good money trading, but I couldn't comprehend the fact that I just made my paycheck in one day. It, it, it was so hard for me to realize and it took me a whole year of me working full time while trading and doing really well trading for me to finally say, okay, I have to break away because now I'm at a level where it's like, it doesn't make sense for me to sit. It doesn't make sense for me to sit at my job when I'm earning money, but I was scared. What I, what was I scared of? I was scared that I would have nothing to do throughout the day. Um, I would then go on the charts and sit there like at one o'clock in the afternoon or lunchtime and be like, Hey, I can find a trade because what am I doing? I'm just sitting around. But once I left and I actually started to, understand what my day was involved, I started to recognize that I do put in a lot of work. I put in a lot of work for the charts. I put a lot of work in analysis. I I'm always thinking about what I have to do when I'm working in the charts. So I'm actually doing, yeah, I'm actually doing more work now than I was when I was at my real job because at my real job, I just have to perform between the normal working hours. Once I leave my job, I don't have to think about it. But here, working for yourself, you're constantly working on yourself, right? So then it becomes, okay, how do I become a better version of myself mentally, uh, spiritually, and then physically? Okay. So now it's like change my whole routine of eating, change my whole workout routine, change my whole sense of my worth and understand that, yes, I'm, I'm in a grateful position and I'm in a position of way different than anybody else, but then don't act differently 
because then it sets you up for failure, right? Because how do, how do wealthy people go broke? Suddenly they start buying things they don't need, right? It's like people ask me, they're like, oh, do you have a private jet yet? I'm like, I don't have the net worth to support a private jet. And why would I pay- Would you need one? Do you need but, one? But why would I pay $60,000 for a flight when I can pay $5,000 for like or the best first, cli- yeah. for the best first class flight? We're, we're all going to the same place, right? My time, is, I agree, is valuable, but it, it's I'm not making the hourly rate to support the fact that I need to own a private jet to go somewhere, nor am I going to places that are going to pay me a benefit for owning that jet, right? So like, you know, you look at companies have private jets, they need to go to meetings, they need to get there because time is money. Exactly. If I'm going somewhere, I'm not in a hurry. Like if you have real estate and you're doing real estate all over the world, you right, need to exactly. get there, look at look at stuff, and you can fly out and be in another location and look at more real estate. Grand Cardone. Uh, uh, yeah, Grand Cardone. Uh, you could, uh, you, you know, at some point, Ted's in the, Ted's in not like superhuman. Everyone's like thinks you're yeah. superhuman. You're just like no, no offense, obviously, with all due respect. No, no, of course. Me and Don spoke about this. Like people don't think they can do what you do and they don't give themselves enough credit enough confidence and and at yeah. some point there, there there was a i can attest to what you're saying because there was a click inside me when you're going man i do deserve this that's right i i put in the fucking work i yeah. deserve this like i, I like right. like i should be doing six figures a day i don't care yeah. that nobody else is doing it I, exactly. I put in the work I have I have the financial means to do it I should be but it's that you have to snap out of that but then what ends up happening is when you snap out of that finally your world opens up like you it's almost like you know the, the movie limit limitless with Bradley Cooper you know when they have that scene where his eyes just like everything yeah. gets so so bright I had that like years ago back in like 2017 uh, 2016 it's like suddenly I woke up one day I'm like wait a second, this is what I was destined for. Like I'm destined to do this because I'm good at it. Like I've proven to myself I'm good at like, why am I stopping? Why am I slowing down? I should be speeding up. Like I should be increasing everything. And then it was basically a newfound focus of, man, I want perfect weeks. I don't want to take losses. I want to have exact, exact analysis, like beating it into my head to be like, I'm going to be like the most optimal person. And then it's like, okay, go to the gym every day, eat super healthy, um, you know, focus on all those things. Obviously, like I go out and have a good time. I go, you know, I go to the bar, you know, I'll go to the clubs. Like I've, I've been, you know, Miami, Vegas, Toronto, Vancouver, like all the clubs and whatever. Yeah. Pop bottles, be stupid. You know, I've done all that. Like I still do that to this day, but when it's work time, it's like optimal focus. Like I'm super optimal when it comes out. Like I have a routine. If I the break my routine, exactly. I optimal. go nuts. Like if I'm not at the gym this morning at like at eight 30, I, I lose my shit. Like that's what happens because I'm like, I got pent up energy. I need to work, but also at the same time, it's like, if I'm not at the gym, I know there's someone else at the gym that's beating yeah. me. And there is a guy there. I call him gray shirt. Cause he wears the same gray shirt every day. He's there at the gym every day. No word of a lie. Every single day he's there. If I'm every not gym, there, every gym's got one. Every, 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 every time I'm not there, I'm like, man, I know he's there today. Doesn't matter what me. Yeah. And that's what that's what motivates me. I don't even know him. I don't talk to him. I've never spoken to him, but I rec- I know his car in the parking lot and I know he's there. And I bet you he's aware you're there if you're showing yep. up all the time. Yep. So you know what I mean? It's, it's mutual. I know these feelings. I go to the gym and I see guys in there every day. And if I miss a day, I know they're in there getting it in. Yeah. Uh, next day, I'm no excuses. You got to be in there. And th- that is a big reason why I don't have cheat days or days off because life is going to throw enough cheat days at you where you're going to have no choice but to take those days off. Of course. So any day that I do can't, you know, like do get in there or I can't get in there, I do because, you know, my cheat day is going to be the day that life throws at me where I can't come in. Yeah. And, and, and it's, and it's super, um, you know, it, it's, it's super important to do that, but that motivation just comes from the fact that when you start excelling, all aspects of your life start excelling and and i think people when they start to realize that that's the huge shift in your mental and everything else psychologically is you start to see a massive shift and everything you do in life is going to be optimal 
and 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 you're gonna keep doing that and it, it takes time like don't get me wrong it, it it takes time but um people they don't um allow it to to simmer they don't allow it to, to work in that way they want everything right away and it's just it's not gonna work that way put in the work get your get your experience and get you know Mm -hmm. your knowledge base regardless of what it is whether it's gym whether it's uh, i've noticed that a lot of successful traders go to the gym and it's <laughs> it's something i do and i've been doing for years too and it's yep. it's just really funny how like things go hand in hand successful and you know well off things go hand in hand with each other well so think about you, it this you, way you work on your mind you work yeah. on your body you work on it on improvement you you know you you're constantly trying to get better okay. like I like I tell people think about it this way you're you're trying to be the most optimal you can be in trading and you're going to eat McDonald's or you're you know you're overweight and and this is the biggest thing and and I get in trouble for this all the time when I, when people are like well that's just my body composition you know like I can't help it right yes you can obesity is a disease you can correct that and a lot of people that are overweight they make excuses for who they are and joe rogan said it the best when i listened to one of his podcasts you know what you can go walk you can wake up in the morning and just take a walk around the block it'll help you exercise if you're overweight there's no excuse for you not to be your most optimal self and that resonated with me when I heard that podcast. I'm like, you know what? He's right. And that really changed my focus as well, because I was like, you know, I was giving myself excuses. It's like, oh, well, I'm a little older, so I can't lift that much weight anymore. It's like, no, you know what? I have to work harder because I am older. Like I see guys that are in their 20s lifting in the gym. I'm like, yeah, I keep up with you. And they're like, man, they're like, you look like you're like 33, 34. I'm like, no. And they're like, Jesus, they're like, how do you lift so much? I'm like, I see you guys lifting. I got to keep up. They're keeping you young. Yeah. You know, honestly, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm better right now than I was at 22, 25, yeah. stronger, faster, just because the mind's developed and the knowledge that I have, the experience that I have has led me to f form certain habits that mm -hmm. have actually, you know, optimized my performance every day, regardless of what it comes to. Whether it's parenting, whether it's uh, trading, whether it's going to the gym, everything's at an optimal level. Everything's kind of been, you know, been down. All the bad stuff has been. Oh yeah, taken and, away. and and the and thing that is comes too, with knowledge experience. the thing is too, like going to the gym. I'm not at the gym for two hours a day either. I'm not on my phone at the gym. Like when I go to the gym, my phone's away. I don't even bring my phone into the gym. Like I see, I see so much inefficiency at the gym. It's not even funny. Well, girls standing there taking pictures of their butts, um, guys on their phones, texting the away, part. reading stuff. And it's just like, it's so inefficient. The gym for me is like going to the dentist. I want to get in, I want to get out and I want to work as hard as I possibly can while I'm there and I'm done. And it's like, people are like, man, how do you do, how do you finish the gym in an hour? I'm yeah. like, I do like seven exercises, four sets each exercise. I'm out like 30, 30, 30 seconds to 45 seconds break each set. I'm on, a, I'm on again. Yeah. What did I tell you that we had this conversation yeah. on one of the streams and I was like, look, my, my gym time is 45 minutes to an hour because my rest time in the gym is 40 to 45 seconds. No talking, no, yeah. none of that. I'll smoke a joint. I'll go in there. I'll do my stuff. I don't need to go socialize. I don't need to go take pictures anywhere. I'll go in because uh, I really don't want to be there. I don't want to spend the extra time in that in where there's a bun bunch of metal clanging. I want to be home yeah. with my kids. I want to be out there in the park. But I go in there because it's it's something I like doing, and I like you know waking up in the morning, looking in the mirror, and seeing you know sharp sharp curves in your body. So mm -hmm. it's it's very motivating. So I go in there 45 minutes to an hour. And that's it. People are like, how you're done already? I go in there. People that were in there, they're still in there, probably still doing the same set. They were doing bench. And they're still doing bench. <laughs> like texting for for a half hour. And come in, come out, bang out six, seven sets. Yep. Leave. No need to be there. After a while, you know, you spend too much time in the gym, you'll start losing body mass as well. So you the muscle mass that you've built, the very important stuff you've actually trained on building after too much time in the gym, that muscle mass starts to disappear. 
Yeah, and also too, I mean, people now, people, all the gym people will chime in and say this is wrong, that's wrong. It's like it's it's also how your body what's reacts. Optimal, yeah, what's yeah. optimal for yourself? Yeah, it's like you know, my body reacts more to a high impact routine than it is for resting and whatever right and and truthfully too it's tough because i don't get super optimal because of the fact that i don't sleep enough during the during my my rest periods like i'm sleeping on average between four and six hours a night that's not enough for me to build and recover muscle so i understand that as well so it, it is it is a bit of a crutch it's a catch-22 like i should be sleeping eight to ten hours to build optimal muscle but i'm not doing that so i i know that i am limiting myself in some respects but but, but the high intensity stuff that's just proven to work with with everyone because th th that's why you'll see sprinters that run the 100 meters are brolic, sharp, very, very defined. And then people that run the long marathons are skinny and because they're not really at high intensity like the, the sprinters are for, for those 10 seconds. And that's how yeah. they train. You know, they, they do very fast sprints over and over. And that's why they're all built. You'll see the, the sprinters are ridiculously built. Remember Michael Johnson in the '90s with the gold Nikes? Yeah, <laughs> Michael Johnson. He, he ran in the Olympics, I think, in Atlanta. When they yeah, the 200 meter Olympic explosion. 200 yeah. meter. I remember that. It was him, um, Donovan Bailey. Oh. Uh, do you remember those days? Oh, yeah. you guys are. They don't remember those days. Donovan Bailey uh, versus Michael Johnson. They did a race in the Sky Dome, I think it was. Well, the Rogers Center. I remember he ran the Olympics with gold Nikes. A long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. I, I, watch, I, I watch all that stuff from the 90s. I think the 90s was the, the best time to be alive. <laughs> especially, yeah, especially for basketball, too. Yep basketball music like it's so funny when i talk to people that were born like in in the 90s that were young so you know like you guys are all born in the 90s and i was a teenager um, in the 90s yeah i was a, i was a teenager too and it, it was it was fun you know there was no social media like the, the the cell phones just started coming out so you can call your buddies and you had pagers and stuff you like had that. the zach morris phone yeah. the big one yeah <laughs> all right i don't know what that is zach morris <laughs> Really? Say by the bell? No, yeah, it was the Motorola StarTac. That was the that was the one. Oh, the StarTac. Those were indestructible. Yes. <laughs> the StarTac. I grew up with the black with the, with the BlackBerry. That was my that's when I grew yeah, up. Yeah, that's yeah, that's when they first started start coming out all all the I had a BlackBerry for the longest time. They were so much. They were so easier because you you could sort of text and drive before they put out the rule that you couldn't text drive drive anymore. I didn't know but that. Like, yeah. The, the user experience on that was really really good. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, nineties was good because you could do you could, everyone was doing so much stuff and nothing was recorded. And it was just a, it was just a good time to be alive. It was it was great. Where you yeah. are, nobody can catch you can catch you in four K. Yeah. Exactly. Ima imagine trading in the nineties. You wouldn't no know social media. any other trader existed. You think you were the only one in the world doing this? It would take you, if you ever ran into another trader, you would think it's like the craziest thing ever. No, everybody's a trader. Yeah. MT1. <laughs> MT1. I think, I think it was um, the, uh, I think back in the day, you had to call in the trades back in the 90s. I think if you're trading FX, you had to actually call in the trades. But the retail traders were allowed to do that? Yeah, I think so retail you sides were allowed to, Yeah, you had to call in trades um, if you were trading back then. It's always funny when I hear people say, oh, I started trading back in like 2005 or 2006. And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> no, the, the retail market wasn't even available to FX traders really. Like you had to have a huge amount of capital and you had to call in your positions. Like it wasn't a web, there wasn't a website. And it's like, oh, I have like- You, you weren't getting 500 to one leverage. Right? Exactly, yeah. It's like anyone, any, when I ever hear anyone who said they started trading when they were like 15 or they started trading back in like 
two, before 2000 and like 10, I just laughed to myself. I'm like, Hey, if you're 15 years old, I don't know how you got a trading account. You're, you're really telling me your parents were like, yeah, well, this is a great career for you. You're in grade 11. Um, yeah, go ahead and open a trading account and start trading. Like, you know, it's just, it's incredible because it's like, what, what kind of parents, first of all, would say, oh yeah, okay. You're going to learn how to trade when you're like 15. Like, parents would have to be traders. Well, whoa, whoa. Well, you look at that, guys. Looks like we have came up. Have that resistance there. Yep. I think it's going to be more of like a 10.30ish. But I don't think 10 a.m. Like, it depends on how we close that. This one this one hour count closes. But I think it's going to be 10.30. That gives a confirmation of where we're going to head. Or 10.15, 10.30. First 15, first 30. Yeah, you can already start to see the 30 minute candle starting to reject that area. So this is where you'll get that pop. Um, if people want, I think the nice sell stop would be at 1927.88. Your first take profit is 1926.02. And then your other take profit is like 1924.34. Yeah, the flip. Yep. If that's where, if we're going to we're going to drop based on ism news it'd be interesting so. for ism maybe the supply chains have affected it but we'll see we have some water brb brb well, well. All right, chat, you know what to do. <laughs> too early man no it's just it's standard while he's gone everyone spams the lead <laughs> what happened <laughs> we, we just closed 10 pips and hit break even it's, like, it's an ongoing thing now it's like every time I get up it's always gonna be like that <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> like like, I think like, more people come by every day, more people are going to catch on. That's funny. I don't know how it started. I have no idea. I think you started it. Yeah. Uh, you were gone for a while. I was like, you know, as soon as he walks in the room, Spam W is like, he missed the trade. <laughs> <laughs> like, what I miss? What I miss? <laughs> Close that 30 pips. <laughs> <laughs> you done for a day, Wix? Or what's up? What's the word? Uh, yeah, I, I'm chilling till 10 30. I'll hang on it. But yeah, I'll be on to yeah, that too. I, I, got my, I, I got my win. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not zoned into the charts. I'm not really tuned in and I'm paying attention as much as I, I should be if, if I was going to take a trade. Um, Yeah, we took that W, you know. No stress for the day. We're winners. You know, you can. What's that line you say? Where the one, top one percent is? Well, look, statistically, I don't know if oh, you're yeah. what, two, two percent. <laughs> I don't know where it is. is. Uh, but well, I don't know. Google it. But whatever it is, uh, top two percent. You're in the two percent of, uh, you're the two percent that won today, chat. You know, there's 98 percent of people that lost. <laughs> so, I don't know. Feel good about that. Yeah, you're a winner. You succeeded. We followed our plan. It, you know, we executed our plan 
and it worked and <laughs> we do it day in and day out there's no arbitration nothing's arbitrary everything is you know everything is set has preset parameters there's no worries and i love the fact that i don't have to come here and do guesswork yeah guesswork same shit different toy seat every day yeah same thing yeah no oh, different different no same shit different toilet seat that's what i said no oh yeah i don't know what you said wordle yeah. wordle mm. wordle feels different without marcos yeah Ted, Ted, did you do Wordle of the day, or? Um, I don't even know what that is. Oh. Like I a... see people do it, but I don't know how to access it, because I, I don't know, I have an Android, I guess. It's on, uh, no, it's, it's on Google Browser. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know. So I don't... It's your brain flowing for a day. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. So the same thing is happening right now with gold that happened at uh, 8.30. Yep pulling back see that's pay, that's pay attention chat yeah so i think the one one more candle pull up and then drive further down um but you can sort of see like we we sort of discussed this as we would tap back into that zone and now we're just waiting for this candle now to release out of that zone similar to this yep over similar to here, the here yeah over and over here yeah yeah, I think as long as you close below here in five minutes, the next one hour count should just drive 23. Yep. Um, I think overall, like as you said, look at the charts, like a lot of traders look, look at this like, oh, it's a, it's a messy range, but I just, I just had to dissect it and just look into it more. It's, it's a lot of information here that people don't realize. For GJ to sell, uh, actually, we're getting to a range too. I think, so, um, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, I forgot the bias. What was the bias today? The bias was over a bullish. Yeah. Yeah. Below, um, 154428 428 from you guys. I'm going to miss on this range over here. I'm going to let it well, just do what it wants to do. Uh, it, it, it can form a support here and do what it did last time over here. Like, yeah. Annotate, draw. Uh, you could do the same one of these mm -hmm. over here. You have minor here, and then you have minor here. But you gotta be able to accept that, guys. You gotta be, you gotta be able to accept the fact that you might miss this range here, but it's okay because you're trying to catch the next range. That's what I'm trying to catch. Like, I, I can care less if I miss on this, what is this, 20, 20, 25 pit range? 20 pit range going down? Right, I'm not I'm not gonna be comfortable taking positions until you break below 154 428. Yo, peace out, JXTR. Easy. Oh, how did London go? Nothing, right? JXTR? London? I think yeah, London's pretty chalk before going to GJ. Well uh, go close the above and then came back in range. Oh wait, what do we have by stops now? This is London. Same thing to New York. Yeah, I think it was London was I think it's just um Oh GJ, I think it was GJ we were looking at. No. Yeah, chat. That's about it. I mean I'm I'm gonna be here for an extra like 15, 30 minutes maybe. I'm trying to see how we can close here. I I just, I really wanna see us close below 1929 here on this hourly candle and like worst case i miss on this piece right here this range i'm okay with missing on this range if i don't get what i want and i'm gonna catch the piece down here below like 1924 it is below there but then at that point the four count will, will be reflipping breaking the lows and then looking left on the forward candle you just have like clean traffic now towards the next support level down like 1919 1920 ish so yeah Four counts coming out top right here. Spent the first hour doing so, so we flip 10 a.m. Should drive. I don't see why not. The issue is that there's there's like a minor support here in a forward candle, but overall, if we start to close on a smaller time frame on a 30 and a 15 below those ranges I talked about earlier, 23, then we're gonna drop down 
forecast was like gonna break the lows to continue down. So just wait for that. Like this piece right here, I wouldn't I wouldn't have caught this even if I tried to. Like the team just rejected. There, was, there weren't really any closures for me. I wasn't I wasn't a cowboy today. You don't need to be. Yeah, another thing is like I'm not like, gonna be like as aggressive and look for positions. I'm okay with calling it a day with one trade. Like I'm okay with my ten pips today. Now we can drop down that are maybe like you know two three hundred pips for all we know, but I'm okay. That wasn't the plan. Yeah, you can content with your plan. Yeah, below twenty three, we should come down towards like sixteen. <laughs> And then what's going to happen is the daily candle will then be, be re-breaking the lows and we'll be filling that daily wick, which is perfect. There's potential here. There's just, there's no, there's no need to, to press it. She's just melting. Yeah, it's expected to melt here. Like, look left. You're breaking below these zones here. All right, so you're expecting price to come down now towards the uh, 154428. Now it just comes to like, what are your entries? How are you gonna enter? How are you gonna, what's your plan? What levels are you looking for, right? So that's gonna be below 154 for me until 154400 to 154. Yeah, GJ, we had London buy stops 155240. Oh, you guys deleted, uh, but but you guys didn't get that, right? You guys deleted it. It never flipped because oh, yeah. uh, that was the first candle that closed above that bullish candle. That was the first one that closed above there. One fifty-five, two forty. Yeah. You just solid. Four candle is pushing down. I think the four candle. You just doing what the four candle want for gold to do. Oof. This open, there's a lot of volume. Oh, here. Here's 10 a.m. So we closed bullish at 10 a.m. here. Um, <laughs> I don't know, chat. Uh, this count is carried crane top wick. I expect this count to flip, break the lows at 26 here, and it should just drive towards 23 here. Um, I just I sent us back bad though. Hmm. How bad? That bad, but. You might have to wait for this to sort of simmer a bit. Yeah. I'm okay with missing on this range. <laughs> yeah, below 23 guys, you have until like 1920. So you have a, a nice 30 pit range going down. If you do break below these ranges here. I want. I really want to see this one hour break the lows because if this one hour count does not break the lows, this count closing bullish of support indicates where we have a rejection, indicates confirmed support, and this count should technically drive up. So you really want to see this one hour count of break the one hour lows for it to be valid to drop to come down towards like 1916. On top of that, you need closures too, right? What time is streaming until today? Um, actually like 15, 30 minutes. If there's nothing by like 15, I'm just gonna call it. If we, if we break or if we break the 1932 mark, I'll just call it a day because then price is just part range within this range again. Back to the morning range. Like, but like if you guys like compared these like today to like our days, like today wasn't that clean of a day. Like it was okay, but it wasn't the cleanest day. It wasn't anything I'll grow, I'll say. And that's because of the daily time frame and the weekly. But like those things are expected though. Like you come you come to the day, you look at the higher time frames, like you see how the higher time frame looks, and if it shows you clean traffic, you're gonna have a great day. If it doesn't, then you're probably most likely gonna be choppy. Right. Did you gonna sell for sales? Um, you didn't close below. You closed one hour close here, right at the support level at one five four four eighty eight. Um, you broke the lows, yeah, but look where you look left. You have a support right here. We rejected like four times here. Or the odds we reject again. 
So we need a closure to indicate you have volume to drive further down. That's also the last hour of the London session as well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised though, because the past three days we drove down like past 11. Yeah, London close had volume. Yeah. It's alright though. Let's be a uh, bigger tent today, guys. Speaking of that, I gotta update this chart here. What time was that trade taken at? 8.30? But 8.30 for now. 3.3.2022. Gold sells. It was a one hour breakout. It was the... Yo, Wix, was it previous breakout? It was the previous higher low, right? Yeah, one hour previous higher low break. And then break of previous high. Half and then 10. And 10. Not bad. Bob a year. Peace out, MM. Good easy, bro. Thank you, Dan. No worries, man. No worries. Thanks for Ted for stopping by again. Yeah, no problem. I think everything was a dud at 10. I mean, you got that bit of a drop at 930, but nothing worth doing, like you said. Playing the range game. Range. The blame game. Do you drop? Yeah, it could drop here. It could drop here, but keep in mind, like, just because it's dropping, it doesn't mean like it's gonna continue oh, to drop, man. right? Like, look left. At one point, these counts to the left here look the exact same. We came down, and we can just easily reject and close above, right? So you need to wait for, you need to wait for closures there. There's no confirmations for me, at least. If you want to take sales, you know, do whatever you want to do. Follow your plan if that's your plan. But for me, I'm gonna I'm really gonna need a closure. Looking left, there's some minor support levels here too. So if you close below here. And yeah, maybe a 15 30 closure will be solid. There's a lot of clean traffic on GG though. Like, there's a lot. You break below these ranges, you have clean here, clean here, clean here, clean down here. If anything, GG looks a lot cleaner in gold today. The gym, peace out, cake, peace out, man. Yo, Andrea, thanks for the 20. Appreciate it, man. How do you get the drop down, like you said, on your sheets? Like you have in your sheets? You just, um, here, you click this arrow here, go down, as you can go. If you want to add, if you want to add something, I think you right click, you go to, I forgot where it is. I forgot where it was, but someone in chat will help you guys out. <laughs> it's dope though. How many viewers do you have today? I think like over a thousand today, right? That's insane. It's funny, yo, Wix, you're talking about like, yo, every time we get a thousand viewers, we can't, we, we, uh, we always, like, there's no trade opportunities, and today there's one. Oh. Uh, like you said, we had a break even, we had a no trade, but they've been kind of like, you know. I got, I have, slow, I got, slow, turn, turn, like, I, I didn't even check the viewers today at all, I just, I just hit them. Sometimes, like, viewer gets to your head, you know, looking at the viewer count, you just want to look at it. Just... Your shame it, shit. It, it varies, right, but you have a, you have a, you have a base, and right? you have a, like, loyal, everyday people that show up. Not loyal to you. I, I guess they're more loyal to themselves because they're trying to learn. So, which which is good. I mean, there's value being provided, and like you say, value recognizes value. Real recognize real. Yeah. When something's beneficial to people, they tend to. I think just, I think it just speaks for itself. Can't get high on those things, you know. Like that's what I learned. You can't get high on like. Like numbers like that, like how many viewers you have, how many subscribers you have. It's just in general, it's uh, you can apply that to everything in life and get too high on things or too low on things. You got to be in control. 
control the emo your emotions or control whatever whatever's going on don't get too high or too low on things you know because you know, it's like the markets things always you know even out come back there's always some kind of you know in life like i said there's always some kind of homeostasis a balance <laughs> yeah i have a feed tomorrow you're gonna be here yeah right of course yeah every day this year no days off how's taxes yesterday <laughs> tiring i was in dallas and i thought it was much bigger than what it really is like what's in dallas like the mavericks the cowboys and that's it cowboys yeah. uh, there was trauma right from the Super Bowl? <laughs> I don't know. But it's it's funny you land in the airport and people are wearing what are the spurs. Oh yeah, the, it's the Antonio. Sh the, shoes. the shoes with the you know, the little I don't know what that little me metal wheel is in the back. I think that's called a spur. Yeah, there's a lot a lot of uh, cowboy hats and cowboy boots there. It's like normal like common like something that's like a halloween outfit here it's like normal here. imagine that in canada you don't see that stuff in canada i don't know just the cowboys right. like that's normal that it's their culture you know you go to canada you see everyone wearing a jacket everyone's wearing a canada goose jacket growing maple leaves <laughs> does this have a channel no not yet, or yeah. well, we'll see what happens. Which has been on stream since like for like a year. I like, no, what? no, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. You've been here for two years. I've been here since 2020 of this time. Yeah, like April 2020. Might have a channel, but like, w w like, why would I stream? Like, I take advantage of the New York session, right? Mm -hmm. And like, why would I go create another stream when you're you're already providing the platform for us to provide value? You know, I'm not gonna monetize my stream, right? Like, I'm, people always like, ask that. They're like, why don't you stream? And I'm like, I can just go on to any stream and sort of just add and compliment <laughs> what they're doing. Like, I'm not, I don't want to, like, I don't try and take people's streams over, but I think if I just add my little piece, because like, like Wick said, I mean, everybody sort of does the same thing anyways. So it's like, if I come on here and talk with Don or I talk with Raja or, you know, I jump on other streams, it's just, I just add my bit to what they're already doing. Like, what am I going to do? Open my own stream. And then basically it, it's sort of like, I remember when I used to play a lot of uh, poker in clubs in Toronto, there was like one night, there was like four games and I had like four different people texting me. I'm like, why don't the owners come together and be like, Hey, I'll, I'll work on Monday. You work Tuesday, you work Wednesday, you work Thursday. So me as a player would play at four different games instead of competing with four different people on the same time. Like it's, it's silly, but I mean, that's, that's, that was the nature. Everyone's greedy, but here it's a little different because people aren't trying to monetize. They're just, you know, trying to build, build their brand and, and give out value to people. But I always laugh when, you know, there's like, as soon as someone takes a day off, like, three other people try and take over a live stream. And it's like, it takes a lot to build a live stream. Like, I mean, I remember when Raja built his, like we talked about it and it was like, there was like 20 people watching for like months and then it finally gained momentum. And now he's got like 3000, 4,000 people that watch it. But like that's years of work and that's years of doing it every day. So like, I respect the people that do this because I, I don't have the, I, I don't have the effort into me to do streams every day. Like I could, I could probably do it like maybe once or twice a week, but to do it every day, that's it, commitment. It's draining. It's definitely draining. dedication. It is. So uh, that's why I like to come on and help you know, sort of like a, a people look at me as like some voice. Um, so I like to come on other people's streams to support them because I recognize it takes a lot of work to do it because I don't do it. That's the one thing I always say to people is I never judge people with something that I can't do. 
Like I'll never turn around and look at something it, like if I don't cook well, I'm not going to rate another cook and be like, you're a bad chef. It's the same thing with live streams. I can't say a live stream is good or bad because I don't do them. I, I respect the people that do them and put the effort in. And then, you know, people are gracious enough, enough to allow me to come on and speak for a bit because like, man, I, I can't do what you guys do like every day, like 630. Okay, guys, live stream, you know, <laughs> and being accountable because like you got to keep it going. Like, yeah. you know, I, I can show up and leave anytime I want. Like it <laughs> doesn't bother me, but like, you know, you guys got to keep it accountable. So, I mean, I always give praise where, where credit where credit's due at that point. Yeah, and Don's sending out right now signals. He's got a signal channel and that, that's taking the same positions here. So he's got to type his position. He's got to talk to stream. He's got to do the signal channel. And he's got to, he does an Instagram story during the trade. It's, so, it's, it's definitely like a, it's, it's out, a lot out. of stuff. I can just easily just not stream and not, you know, do all the extra stuff. And it'll be a lot simpler and easier for me. But like, I'm, I'm already doing it. You know, it's kind of a habit at this point. It's, I'm sure I'm in, I'll be in a better position not doing it, but it wouldn't be a stream. It wouldn't be a community like this. And and just overall building the the FX community and the, just you know taking this industry in the direction it's supposed to be in, not in the direction of marketing. And that that, that kind of feels good because you know like I wish I had all of this when I started trading. Nobody would tell you like what to do, where to go. You know like. I, I'd get answers to my stuff weeks later, you know, like for any question I'd have. It would, it would just, like, and everybody would give you a different answer. Like everyone's a guru, everyone learned from IML or wherever it was, or some, some form of IML speak. <laughs> so, I don't know, right now, 2022, like, People have all of these streams. There's no need to go and spend a crazy amount of money. Everything's available for free and you should be able to, you know, do your due diligence and you know, see, see what works and realize, recognize where value is. And I think it's been happening. Like that's why Don's getting a big increase in viewers. That's why Raj's stream has grown a lot. Just, you know, value. Yeah. You get, it's very, it's very hard to deny value. It's, it's like stuff's there it's physical tangible proof that things have been done and there's years of it and there's no need like it's stuff that you can't even argue about it's not in in you know in discussion that you know what we've done it's it's all on streams it's pretty dope like yeah it's just funny though when you like the comments you hear about people's streams is like oh um you know oh they they took a loss today their analysis is wrong they're just guessing they're doing this and it's just sort of like there's so many times that if you look over the years on like this stream and you know other streams there has been success but people people get so married to the ideas that you know the streams are the beyond all and, and definition of a trader and it's like you're supposed to come onto these streams and personally i like coming onto them because i like to see what people are talking about what the analysis is how people are working it's not necessarily to take a trade idea it's just to see what's going on in the markets and it's up to you to build your own trade ideas at that point um i always just laugh i laugh that when people are like oh well they took a loss today they don't know what they're doing it's like it's it happens like you're just gonna be comment, wrong like that <laughs> comment reveals that that person doesn't know or yeah. really, doesn't really have a clue what's going on you know so but, i mean we're we're fine with that kind of uh, yeah, I, guess, I, just, I just laugh I just, is, yeah i always have a good laugh with that stuff it's just like man if, if I mean, you're well, what right, can you do you're because yeah. you're arguing with somebody that doesn't it's not really aware of, yeah. of of what's going on it's but. like if, you, if you're right you weren't right enough and if you're wrong ha huh, that's you know <laughs> that's what they want yeah like man and i got one more left on this wordle i have oh, three letters <laughs> i have three letters you better you better letters. cover chat <laughs> yeah because chat chat's gonna expose it right now. we usually do one on stream a day Oh, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was promo, but it's not promo. It's like, 
R-O-M is the middle. I don't know what the other letters are. I'm not that smart. Oh yeah, we didn't do it today. I want to do it right now. I want to. I don't want to ruin it for Ted. He don't do it with us. All right, let's go do it right now. What's the first word? Let's do a trade. No, no, no let's not do a trade. Let's do um. What's the word with more uh thing? What's the range. word with range? Yeah. yeah. No, no. Proud. Proud. Yeah, yeah. Proud, means. proud, proud. Yeah. Well, how come yours is different? Why? This is the New York Times one, right? Oh yeah, I have mine is P R O, like my middle number, my middle letters are R O M. Are, are you on the right website, or are you are doing an archive? No, no. <sighs> you doing today's live? No. <laughs> I just whatever. Let me see. I sent a link. Let me zoom. Fuck. Proud. Okay, so R O U. Yeah, see, mine's different. Yeah, but th those aren't necessarily the middle letters. They're just in the word. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are in yellow means it's in a word in the wrong spot. Oh, yeah. I thought... no, oh, gr man. Green I... is the right spot, right letter. And uh, gray is like, it's not in the word at all. Yeah, okay. Oh, man, I've been doing this all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, thought the yellow was like, it's two good. Times. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. No wonder I can't get these things. Yeah, yellow means it's in the word, but in the wrong spot. And green means it's in the right spot. I need help at Wix. R. Hmm. Uh. Right? Uh -uh. No? But it's not the same with Marcos. Why can't she carry us? Uh. He's, he's just got a lot of words he calls out. This is hard. Not rouge, it's not a D in it. These it no could be D's not in it, right? It could, it, no, it could there, be. There's no P, no A. It could be a G and an E, so it could be rouge. R O U G E. It's not, there's no. There's no E. Oh, you already did this? <laughs> let's, let's go, let's go through this. Lounge? I have, my, my letters are R-O-M that I have open right now. R. If it helps, since there's a U in it. I have R-O-M-U. So those are the letters so far, so I just need one more. Right, Wix? Yeah, right. Rumor, yeah. Yeah, rumor. Wait, oh no. Rumor. Okay. Wow, it's on the wrong spot. Damn, what is it? <laughs> so it can't be. Hmm. Morn. Mm hmm. Could be that. Wait, is there an M? Yeah, there's an yeah, M. M was R. Oh, it was Morn. <laughs> nice. Good job. Shout out to Reza. <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah, I got a few. Played one, and I won one. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, they show stats too. <laughs> uh, I was gonna keep him busy for a while. Yeah, if you wanna do more, you can do archive. You can do like the whole. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's one every day. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, I'll chat. it's gonna take me away from doing stuff. <laughs> Another form of video game. Exactly. 
that yeah there was like what is it like two years ago i was playing call of duty every day for like nine hours like i wasn't it doing takes away it, it takes did. away from your day you stop it being did. productive yeah i was playing i was playing like from 6 p.m at night till like two in the morning and then trading at like six in the morning seven in the morning and then playing again <laughs> because you can but like it yeah. you realize to yourself you're like what the fuck am i doing yeah yeah it was just more of the fact that you know once you got once you got good at the game it became fun <laughs> it's like oh, you man. know because it took you like a couple of months like it took me like three or four months to get really good with the sniper rifle and stuff like that and i was like i was so good at the game i'm like i don't want to stop playing now like this is i'm actually winning and shooting people <laughs> hey, you played warzone right yeah yeah i stopped i stopped playing like i haven't played in three weeks been taking L's last few times, and then um, what was it, the other one? Uh, Fortnite. Now, like, well, I had Madden and NBA 2K22. Uh, yeah, so, PS5. So, like, yeah, well, I have it on Xbox. Uh. No, um, let's see, which one? No, yeah, PS5. I have PS5. Uh, yeah, I have NBA 2K, and then Madden on PS5, and then I have Mortal Kombat on Xbox that I play. And I'm waiting for Gran Turismo and GTA to come out. Yeah, I got more. I have more fun playing sports games than like Warzone. Yeah, but then the thing is, like Madden became so easy for me because all you do is throw bombs down the field. I'm like, this is no fun. Like my my, I was beating the computer like 150 to like 35. <laughs> got rage of difficulty. You play yeah. on easy mode. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just set it up and default and I just go and I won the Super Bowl like three times in the franchise thing and I'm like the number one rated person on the game and it's just yeah. But then I go into like the online versions and I'm like, I don't want to play these guys. They're too hard. The talk toxic too, they talk on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Elden Ring? Is that, is that I think that's a new game, right? Yeah, that's what people have been telling me to get. I just haven't been over to Best Buy lately to look at stuff. I gotta run. I'll see you guys tomorrow, Ted. It was nice seeing you on stream again. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'll see, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Don't over trade. See you guys later. All right. Peace out, yo. All right, stream. I'm gonna call it day two, I think. Um, not much for me here. I think GSLs are valid at 1030 for close below, but. I'll call it. I'll I'll break it down in Discord if there's anything, and then gold. Um, it's, it's probably gonna spend. It's gonna spend the, the rest of the session this range here, 1923 to 1932. So I'll just stay out of that range, and um, yeah, that's it for me, guys. So have a great day. Catch you guys tomorrow morning at 6:30 a.m. Eastern. Peace out. Have a great day. And uh, don't trade no leverage. We got our 10 pips today. We did good today, and there's. Friday and the rest of the month left, right? But yeah, for the most part, I think our record this month is 2-0. Our record for the year, I updated it as well. It's going to be 16, 5, and 4 losses. Not bad. But yeah, guys, have a great day. Appreciate you being here today. We hit 1K viewers again today. Thanks for the subs. Thanks for the likes. I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. Peace out, yo. Peace out, everyone.
Peace out. Catch you guys tomorrow.